episode of 24. Oh, yeah? I feel like the, like, the clock, uh, is that even a reference yeah. anybody gets anymore? <laughs> <laughs> like, What's a 24? <laughs> back when we were just like, yeah, extrajudicially beat up those suspects, Jack Bauer, you're my guy. <laughs> no, I feel like you and I both are just like, we started the coffee timer, and we've got, like, yeah. we just got to get to the end of this, yeah. this podcast. <laughs> so welcome back, everybody, to the Rage Select Podcast. Here on Rage Select, I'm Jeff. Hello, Amanda. Amanda, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, it's been a while. It has. I almost died since before, like, the last time I've been on. Oh, that's right? true. Yeah. Because I had COVID. The, the, yeah. And we drove, John and I drove to California, and mm-hmm. it's a 20 hour drive there and 20 hours back. Could have died any moment of time during all that, that. All that sounds like stuff. Yeah. My 2023 New Year's resolution is no more stuff. Yeah, I don't want stuff. Stop stuff. I'm just, yeah, I got my TV. That's, that's all. That's all. <laughs> uh, Perfect. So I didn't even tell you that I won the lottery. You did? I mean, I, it was $2, but I won it. Hey, that counts. I, uh, yeah, I was yeah. like, John, we won! And he's like, what? And I was like, $2. Like, maybe I overshot it. It was $2. <laughs> you got to be, you the, really got to regulate your The grand prize excitement. is $1.1 billion, but still, two is not that bad. <laughs> wow, with that amount of money, you could just like invest it in like a social media company and then lose it all. <laughs> Topical, um, <laughs> which yeah. Uh, apologies in advance, everybody. This podcast is going to be weird. There's very little news this week. It's mostly just salty saltiness. Yeah. Like who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Saltiness this week. on Rage Select. I refuse to believe it, Jeff. <laughs> I didn't call this website <laughs> sunshineandrainbows.com. Okay, that's only because it was taken. That's right. It, it was taken. Sunshine, lollipops, <laughs> and Rage Select. Oh. The, you guys want to hear that before every dojo instead of the little. <laughs> <laughs> <This thing. laughs> um, so yes, we have news. We have trailers. Who knows what else we'll have? But before we do any of that, yes, uh, I watched a lot of movies. Ooh, I watched which a one? lot of movies. I watched. Um, well, there's one I want to talk about. There's one specifically I want to talk about, and then I watched it yesterday because uh, I watched a lot of movies. And the best one that I watched. Well, it was like a tie. Like the menu was very good, uh-huh. but yesterday, and this is the new thing. I'm so excited to find out what movie it is. I I, want, I watched that that Puss in Boots. Uh, oh my god! The last Every wish. clip I see, it looks so good. I'm like, why does it look so good? It's really good, you guys. Yeah. Like I'm not a, a you know. What do they call themselves? I'm not like a Shrek head or anything, or like a, a Shrekophile, Green Boy. I don't know what they call themselves, <laughs> but no. Um, but I, 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 the internet was talking about it, and like I went and I looked at it, and I think the thing is, I was watching. Was it like I think the nail in the coffin was Nando from Nando V Movies on his like second channel uh-huh. had like a just. No, totally go see this. And that dude, like, you know, I don't always agree with everything he says, but they were showing clips of it. And the big thing about it is that, like, apparently it's using a lot of the same animation techniques as Into the Spider-Verse. Mm-hmm. So it's got that kind of, like, missing frames. Kind yeah, of, uh, and it, it looks fucking beautiful. It's very, Why does it look so good? I, super great. And this is the second movie? The second yes. Puss in Boots movie? But right? you don't. No, I didn't yeah. think you did. It was just, like, John was like, yeah, the second Puss in Boots movie came out. And I'm like... This is the second one? And like... There was another one? And like, the cast mm-hmm. is huge. Like, I mean, it's I mean, Antonio Banderas, Antonio obviously. Banderas. Uh, Salma Hayek is the love interest. She was in another one of the movies as the uh, uh, Kitty Soft Paws. Uh, yeah. But... Stupid. Um, uh, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, the guy that plays Guillermo on What mm-hmm. We Do in the Shadows, he plays this like chihuahua. It's like like a therapy dog. Yeah, yeah. Yes. In fact, that actually is part of the plot. Um, and then there's like the bad guys, and one of the bad guys is John Mulaney. <laughs> um, is it Harvey Guillen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one of the bad guys is John Mulaney, and it's <laughs> pretty awesome. This <laughs> bad guy. And what then, a good choice. <laughs> and then there's another group uh, that is. Florence Pugh, Ray Winstone, and Olivia Coleman. What the fuck? Uh, and like another person who I can't f- figure out where they're from. It was fucking great. Yeah. Like it was great. It was like it, it was. I have complained a lot on this podcast about like movies where it's just 
you know, um, uh, to pick a movie that Jeff didn't like that everybody else liked, where I'm just like, why didn't this movie have just like a beginning, a middle, and end? Set up, yeah. here's the problem, character's going to go, they're going to get into an adventure, here's the dark middle point, mm-hmm. here's the third act where everything goes crazy, and oh, here's an unexpected ending that maybe didn't go the way you thought it was going to. And it's just like, just do that, and yeah. I'll sit there like clapping like a seal. It's <laughs> like, yeah! Yay! <laughs> yeah. Because like one of the other movies that I watched last week was that new Park Chan-wook movie, um... Oh my god! I don't remember what it's called, and I <sighs> and neither just... do I. Uh, it's 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 got such a like boring name. <laughs> um, here it's um, <laughs> excuse me. I literally signed up for a movie Decision to Leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was okay. I, I like his. It was less like his other movies usually take a a bigger turn into some dark fucked up shit Mm -hmm. and like the shit was less dark and less fucked up in this i'm confused are you like i wasn't super depressed after watching this so i it's not as good yes that's exactly what happened (laughs) i guess i'll just watch puss in boots Movie slaps, man. <laughs> movie is fucking great. That's like, hilarious. I also watched the menu, which I uh, mean, you know, I still it, haven't seen it. I yeah. haven't had time, man. It's, it's been an exhausting week since that movie came out. Well, I think you've seen something though that a lot of people haven't seen. Uh, Shin Ultraman. You went to go see Shin Ultraman. We saw right? that yesterday. Yeah, I. So of all the Shin movies that are supposedly out or coming out, like Shin Godzilla, which I enjoyed, mm-hmm. um, uh, Ultraman is the one that I have the least amount of history with. Okay. So like I don't, I don't. I, he's you like know anything a, about Ultraman? He's like an alien. They yeah. all wear silver suits. Mm-hmm. There's like a whole planet of them. Like it's points like, up in the air. Yeah, and it gets real big. Yeah, there's like yeah. This is like neat. Yeah, cool. I know. I any episode, a few episodes I've seen that John has watched. He's watched a bunch of different Ultraman. Um, he it, he like fights. Oftentimes, just Godzilla suits with like an extra flap, so you can't tell it's Godzilla, and it's like the but, Star the Star you know. Trek alien species yeah, model, hundred percent. Right? We put some new shit on the face, and yeah, they're like it's definitely not Godzilla, For sure. Um, and but this is so it's its own standalone movie. Um, it's super hopeful, I guess, like compared to what Shin Godzilla was. Where Shin Godzilla felt very like the government is really just uh, ruining this for everybody. Nothing's going to get done because it has to go down the line to the, you know, like the Secretary of Defense. And the Secretary of Defense has sure. to send it up to the, has the Speaker of the House, Speaker of the House, Speaker of the House, Speaker of the House, Speaker of the House. You know what I mean? Like it's like a whole thing. Uh, it's a Shin very Go- bureaucratic movie, Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla. Yeah, Shin Godzilla's <laughs> most exciting scenes are when people get fucking paper cuts for doing mm, all the paperwork. Bunch they of do. nerds on a whiteboard, yeah, and then it, it cuts over to like Parliament and like the local prefecture, like yeah. a, a guy. And I'm not <laughs> saying, well, yes, exactly. And I'm not saying uh, Shin Ultraman is not also that because there's definitely a whole bunch of bureaucracy going on in it. Okay, but it definitely felt hopeful. And to me, I don't know, um, maybe I'm just in a positive mood, but it felt more hopeful and it, and it felt more fun, like okay. more like it had some whimsy to it. And it was like, OK, so we can have fun with this. Well, you know, I mean, just the concept, right? Because Shin Godzilla, like there wasn't another monster. It was just like Japan versus Godzilla, yeah. like people versus a Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like Shin Ultraman, well, Ultraman's our guy, right? So mm-hmm. the, Ultraman's going to beat up somebody else. So you're going to have more like big guys in yeah, suits like, punching each other yeah. instead of just like uh riding on a whiteboard until you figure out how to get all the fire trucks in Japan into the right place or whatever the end of that movie well, was. Well, yeah, <laughs> and like Shin Ultraman kind of starts that way because they don't have Ultraman in the very beginning. They have sure. like four or five kaiju attacks and they created a a like team of people. And so the first uh, kaiju we see in the movie, they're like uh, just all sitting around laptops being mm-hmm. like, it looks like it's e- eating electricity. Let's, uh, wh- where's it going? The next power grid is 40 miles away. Let's do, you know what I mean? Like, it's like a lot of that. Yeah. Which as exciting as them talking about power grid is, <laughs> grids are, it's, it's more fun once like Ultraman shows up and then it's pretty like fast paced, especially compared to Shin Godzilla. Would you, um, I mean, I you and I have different opinions about this, but like, would you recommend that people make an effort to try to get to see it in the theater? Because I know it's got a really limited run. Um, like, is it one of those <sighs> things where it's like, man, you got to see it on the big screen with all the big monsters and stuff? Honestly, like- well, so Ultraman's kind of a tricky one because Ultraman always kind of looks 
movie quality mm-hmm. I, you know still dudes in suits although these aren't they're like cgi but they're made to look like dudes in suits yeah. um but um ultraman compared to um like a common rider or like a uh, super sentai or anything like that would look the quality is leaps and bounds better mm-hmm. um so I think it'd be fine. Like if you're watching on a big screen or projector at home or something like that, Mm -hmm. I think you're not missing anything. Okay. Um, If anything, the, to me, I think Ultraman looks kind of silly. Yeah. I get his design. I understand the history. Don't come for me, (laughs) but (laughs) like I, it's just like, he just looks kind of silly. It's a dude in a silver suit. He still looks like how he looked in like the what seventies when he was created eighties when he was created. He looks the same. Nobody's ever updated him and like given him the, they put a big googly eyes on him and the the first 30 minutes of the movie (laughs) had him run across the I (laughs) 100% wish that's what happened. Uh, But yeah, (laughs) I like, yeah, Shin Godzilla I like because for the first 20 minutes of that movie, it's he's uh, dragging his fucking front <laughs> half like a dog, yes. you know? And that's all I ever think about. And I'm like, why would you want to shoot him? Look at him, so cute. Uh, oh, actually, that's funny because one of the other things that I did last week was um, I was looking for stuff to... Uh, I listened to the books, the audibles.com. Yeah. And um, I was just looking for something new, and I... I uh, I gave um, the Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi a, a huh. try, which is uh, basically like the, I kind of wish that the name didn't explain what was going on because it's kind of the story about this guy. It's really tied. He wrote it like like really shortly after the pandemic, and it's really tied into 2020, the year. Mm-hmm. Like the guy that the the main character like gets fired from his job and has to deliver Uber Eats during the pandemic. And then one of the guys wow. that he delivers to is like, you should come work for me. And so basically the setup is that there's kind of like an alternate dimension where there are kaiju and you've got these people that are there to try to like keep them from doing anything bad. Yeah. Um, the only problem that I have with it. Uh, I don't know. If you th- if you think that sounds interesting, maybe you should go skip the next 30 seconds and just like go read it for yourself cuz I've never I don't really have that much of a problem with the people what read the the voices of the people that read the stories. Yeah. And it's a lighter story than a lot of the other John Scalzi stuff, but um Will Wheaton <laughs> does the oh. the reading of it and he kind of reads every th- every line sounds like he's smiling while he's reading it including the dark things, the, you know, the, the, the big dramatic changes and stuff where it's like, he doesn't really modulate his tone as much. Yeah. Uh, Like for a a comparison, one of the other John Scalzi series, the dispatcher series is read by um, Zachary Quinto and he's just like very dry. Yeah. Uh, And it's like, I, I kind of prefer my audio book people to be dry yeah as opposed to exuberant because dry lets me fill my own emotion in yeah. whereas exuberant it's like i've got to fight against the tone that i'm hearing sometimes to be like well that doesn't sound like a f- funny thing but it's also kind of a flippant book like it's kind of got yeah some like you know um everybody's a wise cracking marvel character kind of thing uh-huh. but it's a good story like um it's an interesting story yeah i'm interested so. that i you know, if you're, ti- if, you, if you're out there, if you listen to podcasts, you're tired of podcasts, maybe go sign up for an audible trial. Use you're not tired of podcasts. Modern Rogue or what? You're oh, listening I'm- to our podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess the thing is that I switched to audiobooks. I switched away from politics podcasts to audiobooks because the politics podcasts were making me want to eat like a brick yeah um see yeah so. i uh, yeah I've, I've started slowly transitioning to audiobooks yeah but i'm never gonna listen to one with will wheaton <laughs> i don't particularly like will wheaton that's fair enough well i'll tell you what i don't like amanda Drugs. Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Yeah, it should say something that the biggest news of this week is 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 dunking on Ubisoft. Yeah, uh, well. So Ubisoft had themselves like uh, an investor earnings call uh, last week, and uh, you'll never guess what happened. Everything worked out. Nope. Oh, so close. (laughs) Yes, and that's the end of the story. Moving right along. It was like that, except the opposite. Um, (laughs) Perfect. So 
I don't know how familiar you are with Skull and Bones. Uh, um, I feel like it's been around forever and never been around at all. Yes. Announced in 2017. Uh, it's gone through <laughs> so many different can't, iterations. I can't wait for the 10-year anniversary of this game that <laughs> hasn't come out. <laughs> was MIA for a long time. Yeah. Um, it basically was like when Assassin's Creed 4 came out and they had the boat combat and everybody liked it. And they were like, what if we made a multiplayer version of that? Yeah. That people could just go play online multiplayer boat battles. And then they never put it out. Yep. But my thinking from everything that I've read is that they made a deal with um, it's Ubisoft Singapore. Mm -hmm. And they made a deal with the government to get tax breaks. And if the game doesn't come out, they have to repay the tax breaks. Why don't the they tax just breaks? put out a shitty game? I mean, I know that sounds horrible. I'm not, you know, but like we're five years deep into this, right? Yep. yep. Uh, six. It's 2023 six, now. You're right. <laughs> we're six years deep into this yep. and it's not happening. There's very few games that spend six years in trouble development and then come out and we're all just like, oh, it's really good. Yeah. It's super great, you guys. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> just cut your losses. If it's if it just has to come out, yep. then send it out. We're we're this happened. Did it start before the new generation of consoles? Yes. 2017? Yeah. Oh, no. It started. Um, see, Assassin's Creed 4 was a PS3, PS4 bridge game. Like it came out, it was Jesus one of the first Christ. PS4 games where you could put the <laughs> PS3 disc into the PS4 and it would download the PS4 version yeah. of the game with enhancements and stuff. Wow. So, um, so it was uh, been MIA forever and just a big joke. And then last year they put on like they put out a whole um, like little conference about it, saying it's going to come out this year, you guys. Yeah. And then it was supposed to come out on November eighth. That you will notice that it has not been on Rage Select, so that means it did not come out. Yeah. Uh, so then it got pushed into this year, and everybody was like, lol, 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 lol. And now it's been pushed from the beginning of this year until Q two of <laughs> this year. So <laughs> and everyone's like, sure, right <laughs> after April. Um, Jesus yeah. Christ, that's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, not kind of. It's yeah. incredibly embarrassing. Like just, just put it out. Like I know it's a broken game, but nobody even wants it anymore. Do you? Do you? Um, I don't. I like to bring it this up. I know you don't. Uh, I want to bring <laughs> this up for for everybody. Um, February of last year was it February? I believe. Right around the time that Elden Ring came out, Ubisoft put out Rainbow Six Extraction, mm -hmm. which was originally announced as Rainbow Six Quarantine, which they couldn't really use that name after because it was announced in 2019, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, which was basically their Rainbow Six Left 4 Dead game. Where, yes. uh, and like... Nobody talks. We don't talk about yeah. Rainbow Six Extraction. Like that game came out, and they were just like, "Hey, let's get on board the 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 Left for Dead gravy train. We'll make our own Left for Dead." Yeah, and they put it out, and everybody was like, "Nope." Yeah, and then they announced um, Ghost Recon something bullshit mm -hmm. uh, uh their battle royale game yes I and, remember uh, that too. and 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 then they canceled that yeah. and then they said oh we've announced project horseshit which was a uh, rainbow six or it was a ubisoft like hero shooter where you would be like it was like their version of overwatch where you were going to be playing oh. as different characters from the different the division and rainbow six and a bunch of different tom clancy things I don't believe that's coming out either. I think that got canceled because... So do they make games anymore? Or is that just... Mario Rabbids? Uh, uh, that was a, a game that came out. In fact, uh, during, well, look at them. during their earnings call, they talked about how disappointing the sales were for that. Oh, and let's also not forget, because this apparently this segment is just called Let's Punch Ubisoft's uh, Nutsack as hard as we can. Well, just uh, hitting the old speed bags, you know what I mean? Last year, they uh, they announced that they were shuttering the studio that was making the Prince of Persia remake, and they were bringing that back in-house to restart the development of that from scratch. Uh, How are they, they still around? How is this working out? Uh, Where is the money coming from that they're doing this with? Because what fucking what? So that's that's the big secret of the video game industry, right? Is that is um, Ubisoft really a front for for drug money? You can tell me, Jeff. <laughs> no. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege was their Counter-Strike competitor. Yeah. That game is phenomenally popular. And okay. it's got like microtransactions and stuff. They keep putting out put the weirdest skins in the world. They put a Kiryu Kazama skin. They put a Pickle Rick skin into Rainbow Six Siege. You like, put a Pickle Rick fucking skin anywhere and that shit's going to make money. Yes. Uh, they put a near 
a near replicant skin into Rainbow Six, and it's just like, but, but why? why? Yeah, mm. that doesn't make any f- I play Fortnite, and it makes sense there. Everybody's dressed up as some goofy bullshit, but you're supposed to be a bunch of like. <laughs> Fortnite is essentially <laughs> just cosplayers right. shooting the shit out of each other. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, the other thing to mention is that, yes, uh, there were three unannounced games that were canceled, uh, at this same event. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, Ubisoft needs to get their shit together, shit together. I mean, they, they switched from kind of a weird European company that would make crazy shit like Rayman or, or, you know, Whatever. Oh, I uh, miss Rayman. Apparently, Just Dance didn't do very well either. Just Dance 2023. I mean, it's because I didn't buy it. Yeah. Like, I was the one that was going to put it over the edge. They were like, <laughs> I'm going to wait until I see Rage Select do the dances. Mm-hmm. And then we didn't do the dances. We didn't do the dances. <laughs> yeah. um, I literally wanted to avoid dancing so much that I got COVID <laughs> on purpose. On purpose. <laughs> I just started mouth kissing anyone who was coughing, just licking doorknobs. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, so, yes. Currently, though, um, Ubisoft has on the horizon mm-hmm. an Avatar game. <laughs> Great. A Splinter Cell remake. Okay. A free-to-play Division game, uh, Division Heartland. I don't know if that's ever going to come out. Mm. Um, Neither do they, apparently. But, I mean, they did announce that there's going to be several new Assassin's Creed games. Like, Assassin's Creed Mirage is supposed to come out this year. And that one actually looks legitimately good because they're like... Let's kind of go back to the old school formula of what used to work instead of all this RPG or shit that we do now. That, that everyone keeps going, I don't want it. Thank you, though. Yes. So, and and nowhere in any of these stories will you hear anything about Beyond Good and Evil 2 because I don't think that game exists anymore, even <laughs> though it looks Aww. really good. But, yeah. So, yeah. Skull and Bones has been delayed. Ubisoft is on fire. That's hilarious. Um, they are not the first, right? Like, a lot of gaming companies are kind of you know blizzard is a mess square enix is a mess like activision's kind of a mess yeah like there's a lot of companies right now big names uh, that just don't have their shit together so yeah um guess we'll just have to get rid of all the corporations baby oh no well i tell you one corporation that we maybe shouldn't get rid of and that's naughty dog now last week i was talking some crap about naughty dog uh-huh. because they were talking about how um like, they want their new games to be like TV shows, and they're not done with The Last of Us yet. And I'm just like, oh, my God, please get over. Can we get past this phase and get into the next yeah. Like uh, the next part? Because I like their games, but I'm just not the biggest fan of The Last of Us. Same. Um, but they actually did have an interesting interview with uh, Neil Druckmann on... Is that just comicbook.com? I yeah. Yes, comicbook.com. Okay. Um where he basically said, because they, they have been working on something new, mm-hmm. but that Naughty Dog, I wanted to point this out because I think it's good. He, well, I don't know. There's a, it's a double-edged sword. Um, said that they're not going to announce, they're working on something new, but they're not going to talk about it until it's like ready, way down the line, yeah. specifically citing like the pressure that occurs the moment that you announce something, especially something that even has a release window, is it suddenly puts like a lot of pressure where if you if you delay something that hasn't been announced yet, then you don't people don't threaten your developers with death on the internet. Yeah. Like you do nowadays, as opposed to that. He specifically pointed out a work life balance, mm-hmm. um, which is also all well and good, but apparently there was a lot of crunch that happened there on the lead up to The Last of Us Two coming out. Um but there's also been some reports that they're trying to kind of turn that stuff around. Like Last of Us 1 was announced last year at the Summer Games Fest. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had been rumored for a long time, but it had never been confirmed. And when they announced it, then it came out like three months later. Yeah. And I personally like that better. I, I like Yeah, it. I prefer it more. And we've talked about this, like e- people at E3 being like, we just came up with the title for this game and it's coming out in two years and then they have to crunch and make it work because they decided to like tell people they made a trailer but like that's that was it it, yeah um like the the one of the things from last year was that there was a remake of star wars ninth the old republic that was happening yeah and then apparently like i don't know what happened i I love this story and that's why i like to tell it i don't know what happened but it was like there was a meeting between the guys that were making that game 
and Lucas, uh, the Lucas organization. Yeah. And after that meeting, the creative director and the producer were both fired, and the project was taken oh, away from that right. studio entirely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> talked it was just about like, this. I don't know what happened in that meeting, but I want to know what happened in that <laughs> meeting. <laughs> I wish I were a fly on the wall during that meeting. Yep. Uh, let's see. In other game development news, um, we've got some some updates on a couple of horror games. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first being Silent Hill Two. Uh, one of the uh, one of the people working on this, Anna J- Justinska, um, talked with Dread XP and basically said that like this is like I, I, I it's weird to me that we live in a time where this is now a thing. Mm-hmm. Where they're like, we're not changing or updating the story at all. All we're dealing with is the mechanics, and we're trying to make like the actual game mechanics work better. Yeah, but we're not going to be doing anything to the story. Were we expecting them to change the story of Silent Hill Two? Well, I think that's what everybody. I think that's what a lot of gamers have come to a expect? fear of. Uh, yeah. yeah, like uh, of taking things out that may not be, you know, that. But the thing is that, like, I feel like a lot of times when stories get changed, um, is it like stuff that doesn't translate well between? 2001 and, and 2023 two, kind I don't of know. thing or is this what <laughs> woke media is doing to our video games let's come back to that in the next story oh, but nice. i i i think um i don't know see the thing for me is that uh i have a very weird um i have a very weird like perspective on this mm-hmm. because i played silent hill 2 um I'm not super excited to play it again. Yeah. Like they're making, they're doing a remake. But they're also making Silent Hill 2, the movie. Silent Hill 2 has like never been gone from the conversation. Like it's yeah. such a classic that we just always talk about it. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't miss Silent Hill 2. You could make it. You could not make it. I don't care enough about Silent Hill, the franchise mm-hmm. to care. I cared when it was Kojima, Del Toro, yeah. and Juji Ito. That it's was what I cared. Too like, late now, baby. <laughs> yeah, but... For this, it's like, yeah, I don't care. Change whatever you want to. But I think that there are a lot of people who they want to see. I don't have this particular gene. I think it's like the people that want to see uh, like an anime made into a live action movie mm-hmm. where I'm just like, why? There's already an yeah, anime. Yeah, they're watch it. Or like, uh, I want to see my, my favorite comic book directly translated panel to panel into a live action movie. Isn't it funny? Well, like, like, the, uh, you know what they should do? They should remake my favorite movie, but it's shot for shot exactly the same, and they just put an actor that I now like doing the role. But he's doing it like if he's the person that originally did the role. And it's like, why would I want to... <laughs> Just rent it. Just just go on by it. Yep. Just, I'll send you the Blu-ray. Like why are why do you, why are you like this? I mean, I can kind of understand a little bit because the actual combat of Silent Hill Two is a little like meh, right? Like yeah. it's repetitive and you just kind of run it back and forth. Well, like, yeah. I mean, at least in video games, it kind of makes sense to like remake and mm-hmm. because like you know you change consoles, visuals change so drastically, um, like all the time. And, you know, there's things you could improve upon, but like simultaneously, fans are so. I wouldn't <sighs> listen to fans. I just, oh, I don't. <laughs> it's fine, though. I don't have any, so I never have this problem. Um, now, if you want to get. <laughs> but if you want to get really weird about it, right. And I do. You could also make the case that, like, the boring, repetitive, monotonous combat of the first game is part of the soul-crushing, depressing tone yes. of the story of trudging through <laughs> depression and the loss of a and loved that one. That sounds like an excuse somebody would have had when the game first came out yep. to make up for the fact that it was not the best gameplay. Yep. I don't know. That's one that, that's one that it's everybody's... Because, like... Uh, we're, we're going to get to uh, Resident Evil in a minute, right? Mm-hmm. Like all the new Resident Evils, I like them and they're fun to play. But there's something about like making the controls on those like super duper good and snappy mm-hmm. that makes them way less scary than when I was trying to turn Jill at fucking like 
one mile an hour to the left yeah. to hit this dog that's just bouncing off the walls <laughs> all over the place. And yeah. I've got like two bullets and like a half an herb, like one leaf left from an herb yeah. that I saved like an hour ago. And I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that like Bloober Team is a game, is a Bloober. company that I think has good. Yeah, was it the last time you were on when we talked about the Silent Hill stuff? Did we talk about the Silent Hill stuff? I don't know, man. That would have been anyway. two months ago. Anyway. I don't um, even remember yesterday. <laughs> anyway. Um, Bloober Team, I think, is a, is a game company that has uh, that is pretty good at making games, but I don't know how good they are writing games. Their writing for their games is never really, like, stuck to me, the layers of fear. and uh, Yeah, not super strong. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully just leaving the writing to the original and then, like, redoing the game. I don't know. I mean, you know, give it a shot, right? I guess that's the thing. Yeah. You give it a shot. Is it good? No. All right. Let me go on to the next fucking yeah, video game. Right? There's we only can a move billion. On with life. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that also leads us to Resident Evil Four because mm -hmm. the Resident Evil Four remake is coming out, and there was an interview. Again, you asked about whether this was a concern. There's an interview with Edge Ma Magazine where one of the people working on it said that like. They're not cutting any content from the original Resident Evil 4. Did Resident Evil 4 have a lot of sexist content? It did, didn't it? Like the president's daughter stuff? Is that okay. or president or whatever she is? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll lay it out. Well, okay, well, let me finish this first. Uh, they said that like there's a part at the end where you go onto this island, mm -hmm. uh, and that part is kind of universally like, eh, like it's not the part that people like yeah so they said they're going to be adding content to that part of the game but all of the rest is apparently and and a lot of this is because in resident evil 3 there were parts that were taken out mm -hmm. um and a lot of people a lot of resident evil fans did not like that because they were like i wanted to play every part of resident evil 3 but with these new graphics and you cut out like a level and a half basically yeah but like it. resident evil fans got mad that ada wong looked asian so <laughs> you know uh as far as the other stuff goes what you were asking before in the original resident evil 4 you're res rescuing the president's daughter she is canonically like 18 she looks like she's 14 in the yeah. game and she's running around scream queening with a little plaid schoolgirl skirt yeah. like crouching behind stuff and there's some romantic tension between her and Leon, which was never my favorite part of that game. Yeah. Uh, so, and this time they've made her look a little bit older and they've given her more pants. And hell yeah. Of course, the internet is just like, boo. Uh, but, now she doesn't look like a child. I don't like it anymore. Yeah. I don't. Sir. I don't. <laughs> Yeah. Look, man, there are AI tools on the internet that'll let you make whatever kind of fucking crazy thing you want to look at, yeah. right? Like, just, I don't need the video game to make it's, me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> fine. Like, yeah, these guys uh, don't know what an adult looks like anyway. Yeah. That shit's so fucking weird to me. The, like, she, she, they made her look way older. Now she looks like she's, you know, fucking 30 years old or whatever. And it's like, or you're just being real weird and gross my guy <sighs> yeah i don't you you're always going to have a hard time making the argument to me that it's like like she's 18 for a reason mm -hmm. that number is very specific right yeah. but the fact that she doesn't look anything like an 18 year old yeah is it's weird yeah that I shit don't of it. like so, i'm going to look directly into the camera and let you know 18 years old right schoolgirl like, outfit though that like just barely shit grosses me out the older i get the weirder it is yep me too i mean you know i'm fucking 45 years old You're so, like, what? <laughs> um, so yeah i'll be 45 this year actually oh uh, uh let's see another horror game news we got another kind of yeah, story um I found out this week that the Callisto Protocol apparently uh, left a bunch of people that worked on it out of the credits. Like intentionally? Apparently so, because the thing is that, okay, this has been a long I mean, run. I don't know how people unintentionally get left out of the credits, but like. So the thing is that if you were there from the beginning to the end, or if you were there at the end, if you were hired during the development and you get to the end and your name yeah, was in the credits. Yeah, you were definitely right? on there. 
uh, if you left at any point in time, regardless of the amount of time that you were there, apparently there was kind of like a miscellaneous crew section. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to reports, apparently it was just like, who did the higher ups like? Those wow. people's names got put in, but like not everybody. That sucks. Yeah. Now the biggest, of, of course, the highest profile version of this was L.A. Noir that had like a 10 year development cycle or whatever. And mm -hmm. people that would like, you know, anybody that left at any point in time was just like out of the, out of the credits. You're not credited. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I don't like, I kind of think that every single person who had anything at all to do with the video game should be in the credits. It's the credits. Yeah. Like, it's not like well, adding more names to it is going to cost you another six months of development yeah. time. <laughs> I mean, it's a, um, you know, they put work in. Yeah. No matter how big or how little. I mean, that's part of what created this thing that you are now selling. The least you can do. Like if you had the that same. is literally people oftentimes are like, uh, especially with artists or anyone in the creative field, mm -hmm. does the like we could pay you or we could just give you uh, oh, right. exposure. exposure. Yeah, and it, what is more exposure than putting their name on the credits of the, the video game they worked on? I mean the the you know like. The the people are still going to put the whatever they did on their resume, so it's not like yeah, they get erased, I, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's not like they don't like. <laughs> I don't assume that the developer is like, they, you stopped working for us before the games finished, then you didn't work here, right? Like, <laughs> right. What kind of villain? But you know what I mean, though. It's but still. on the other hand, it's just a list of names. Like it's not again, yeah, you know, I, if there was a Grubhub guy that came by once a week to give you guys pizza for Pizza Friday, put that guy's name at the credits. <laughs> like you know, d d put everybody's the, the guy at the front desk that buzzed you in, yeah, like every day that that sat there and ate donuts, made sure that nobody came. Put that guy's name at the credits, tell, man. Like, tell you what, if you don't like them. Make the credits go faster when their names go. Sure. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Sure. You do like real slow for all the people you like and then real fast for the people you don't. Well, also, let's just be perfectly clear here. Unless a game restricts me from doing it, I hit the X button to skip the credits. Yeah. I don't sit there and watch. Ooh, you know what's a good one? What's that? You force them to watch the credits for a certain amount of time. And then once it gets to the names that you don't like, then uh -huh. you give them the skip button. <laughs> So just have like the CEO and like the producer or whatever. And then once you get down to like the Grubhub guy, it's like, yeah, like skip. Just, Go like, ahead and skip. Maybe just like press S to skip in the corner and then just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And bigger. Oh my God. I, I will do. That's what I do. That's how I make my video games. 100%. Amanda is, 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 uh, is pioneering a new form of video game development called that petty shit. Like. <laughs> yeah. Passive aggressive game development. Yep. That's the name of my studio. <laughs> uh yeah so this has brought up uh again also it's worth mentioning that this is the same you know the director on this game was a guy that came out and like he had this real like man our developers are so awesome they're working like 12 to 15 hour days oh, to get this I thing out yeah, yeah. yeah and then uh, the internet was like are you That's bragging about crunching your employees and he was like no 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 no, 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 no. they're so dedicated that they don't even complain when i force them to work 12 right. to 15 hours yep so not the best look uh let's see another horror game a lot of horror games news um if you're planning on getting the new Dead Space uh, remake that's coming at the end of January mm -hmm. and you pre-order it on Steam, you get Dead Space 2 gratis. Nice. So, this is how slow this week of news is. Yeah, is. but that was exciting. <laughs> I'm Ooh. telling you about the thing. Uh, actually, we've got some some more interesting stuff that's coming. So, um, speaking really of... Really front-loaded with the boring stuff. <laughs> <laughs> actually i don't know because like the thing is that you see the number of tabs i've got up here and how fast we're going through them yeah. when we get to the end here then it's just trailers and then it's the end of the podcast um, so well. this may be the shortest podcast i've recorded in five years nice. Who knows? uh oh and it's mine and i it's appreciate amid. that yes. yay uh let's see um speaking of games that you're gonna get on the pc uh <laughs> there was a really interesting it was a really interesting thing that happened last week where uh, Naoke Yoshida, uh, also known as Yoshi P, who's mm -hmm. the guy that made uh, Final Fantasy XIV, who is making the new Final Fantasy XVI, mm -hmm. was online. And he was like, um, 
why do you guys keep asking me about the PC version of this game? There's no PC version of this game. It's on the PlayStation 5. Buy a PlayStation 5. And it was like, what is it? here's the quote. Nobody said a word about a PC version releasing. Why is it like a PC version? Is, why is it like a PC version is releasing six months later? Don't worry about that. Buy a PS5. Sorry, I went overboard. We did our best. So please look forward to it. Um, so <laughs> and then he looked at all the pores and said, why don't you just eat cake? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Um, when the original trailer for Final Fantasy came out, the for Final Fantasy 16 came out and it mm-hmm. got to the very end. I'll let you d- describe Amanda what mm-hmm. what happens here when you get to the end of the trailer. Uh huh. There's a logo and it says Final Fantasy uh, 16. 16. Thank you. PlayStation console say? exclusive. Uh huh. And what's after? What's at the top right hand corner of exclusive? Top right hand corner. Uh, a little asterisk. Okay. And what does that asterisk read down at the bottom? Also available on PC. <laughs> yeah. Huh. It's like a little, it's like a little treasure hunt when you do it like that, Joe. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was the whole process that I went through, where I was like, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a yeah. minute. Why is there a footnote to this trailer? Yeah. Um. So yeah. Also, uh, I'm just gonna say right now that I'm pretty sure this is just lying because. Square Enix puts everything out on the PC. Yeah. Like all the Final Fantasies are out on the PC. But why deny it? Uh, just to be like get it on playstation because yeah it's it's what companies do a lot of times where they're like companies uh, lie to us jeff <laughs> yes where they're like there's never going to be a pc version of course not buy it day one buy a playstation 5 buy a playstation 5 with this video game buy two playstation 5 so you can play it on two tvs at the same time hell yeah uh, that's what i do yeah and then everybody that's waiting for it to come out on pc like six months to a year later it's like oh my god there's an enhanced edition and now it's on steam and here it is and go play it Da, 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 da. And then everyone like, has to pretend to be surprised and grateful. Wow, yeah. you're the best. We've been sitting here starving for some PC games. Yeah, so it's kind of, I mean, like, I get this, but it's like, it's old. Um, it's old. It, this is an old attitude to have. Yeah, it's like, a weirdly old tactic to yeah. go for when you could just be like, PlayStation 5 now, PC a little later. Not to mention that I'm, uh, you know, unless it's like a Sony specific game, like unless it's specifically Sony, because Microsoft, their shit is day to day PC and Xbox. Right. Same, well, I mean, right? it's Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that both of these systems run on PC architecture. Mm-hmm. So like porting these games to PC is like not a thing. It's not like it's going to take nine months of development to do it. Yeah. Like, there, in fact, at the beginning of that trailer that you were and I were watching, it was like, this is running on a PC emulating a PS5. Like, yeah. it literally had a, a message saying that. So, the idea that it's like, PC? What PC? What's a PC? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I've right? never seen a computer in my life. Yeah. Go yeah. buy go buy PlayStations. No, PlayStations. That's what you need is some bullshit. Yeah. Uh, if you really do want to play this game, it's going to come out on the PC now. The flip side of that coin, of course, is the fact that Square Enix is run by a bunch of... Um, like monkeys with syphilis. So like um Who gave the monkey syphilis? They got it from each other. And then do they specifically like ask them before they hire them if they have syphilis? Or no. do you automatically get syphilis <laughs> part of the once you're hired? It's part of the enrollment package. It's part of your new day orientation. Welcome, yeah, welcome to orientation. Um, <laughs> Is that it could take them up to two years to put out a PC version. That's true, yeah. Uh, but if you have a PC, surely you must be used to this by now that, like, <laughs> these console companies pay for for exclusivity, especially if it's a PlayStation thing. Yeah. Sony's only move at this point is to pay for exclusivity because every fucking thing is on Game Pass. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you. Uh, speaking of Steam... <laughs> this is how slow of a news week it was. Oh, my God. Uh, last weekend, Steam broke their record for concurrent users and had 10 million people all play in uh, Steam at the same time. So, Wow. It's been it's such a slow news week that everyone was on Steam playing video games. 
<laughs> yep, there's no drama. Yeah, there's nothing to do. Twitter's broken. <laughs> yep, uh, just on Steam. Not only that, but it was 10 million, uh, 10 million concurrent users playing games mm -hmm. and 33 million just like people on Steam. Like some people just run Steam in the background yeah. to talk to people. So that's a, that's, that's a pretty good chunk. Yeah, that's a decent amount. Um, you know, so... Anyway, that was just a, a translation or a um, transition story. Because what I really want to talk about oh. is the fact that uh, in the PC gaming space, I want to talk about NVIDIA video cards. So, what of them? The new NVIDIA 4080 cards came out. They cost like $2,000, mm -hmm. and it, it sucks. I'm not going to spend $2,000 on a video card. I would spend $2,000 on like, it's got to be something I do every day. Well, that's a video card. No, <laughs> it's no. Uh, you're not talking me into getting it. <laughs> I have to spend two thousand dollars. It's got to be something significant. <laughs> something significant. Um, but that's a lot of Taco Bell, Jeff. It's so much Taco Bell. <laughs> I ate Taco Bell twice last week, and it was a bad decision both fucking times. So that's the biggest story of the news week. <laughs> I <laughs> ate Taco Bell twice in one week, and I live to tell the tale. Oh my god! They got one of those new ones where it's just like here's a bunch of shit, and then also some nacho chips and cheese. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, give me all that crap and then a, one more burrito on top of it because I hate my I life and I want to die. <laughs> you know, have you ever had the if you ever had the the God, you go to Taco Bell's website and you look at like the combo meal and then I don't know if there's some law somewhere where on the website they put like sodium warning <laughs> like at the bottom of a <laughs> That's combo. That's amazing. Like just say like, hey, this is They're, way yeah. too much salt, but like I'm not your dad, That's, so you do yeah. whatever you want. It's 100% okay, Taco Bell. <laughs> anyway, yes. RTX 4080 cards are out. <laughs> They're super expensive. They also like catch your computer on fire, and they you need like eight power supplies to run them, and it's just whatever. Mm -hmm. But they're they've got a lot of super cool shit that they're doing, like the new, um, like the specs on these cards have become have outpaced what video games can do. Like yeah. they're talking about like, oh, you can run uh, like Overwatch two in eight K at like two hundred frames per second, and I'm like. What monitor runs at 200 frames per second in 8K? And Blizzard's 8K? Like, like, please don't do that. <laughs> uh, you know. Does it feel like entering a different dimension when you do that? <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is that uh, there is a sneaky way that is not currently up. I'm keeping track of this. When you see some one of these days, dear listener, you're going to log on to RageSelect.com. You're going to see Portal with RTX. Uh, and when you see Portal with RTX, you'll know that this has happened. GeForce Now is a streaming service that mm -hmm. is like um, the Microsoft X Cloud or, uh, you know, Nintendo has a streaming thing. Sony has PlayStation Now. Yeah. Except that the thing about um, GeForce Now is that it logs into your Steam library. It logs into your Epic library. Um, it logs it. It'll play any of the games in either of those. Uh, and if you buy the ultimate package, which is $20 a month, currently you get access to... Um, servers that are running RTX 3080 cards. But NVIDIA just announced that they're upgrading those servers and that package to run 4080 cards. So you can run that streaming service over mm -hmm. the internet, but you can now run it with like the tippy toppest card. And not just that, but like they're talking about how you could run like 240 frames per second in 4K, which like um, I did some experiments when I got my monitor is 120 frames per second it's a 20 120 hertz monitor so it can run 120 frames per second yeah and the thing is that i pay a lot for my internet connection i paid a lot for my monitor and i paid 20 bucks a month for this shit you start to get to a point where the speeds are so high that the lag becomes so low that you can't detect it anymore yeah and so it's just like oh shit it's like i have a two thousand dollar video card for the low price of 20 bucks a month yeah um now right now there's still upgrading like they have a status web page it says they're still kind of like rolling Processing, this stuff out yeah. but i didn't know about this in fact i literally read about this last week and then when i was getting the news ready for this week i remembered this story and it wasn't on i go to you know polygon and kotaku and the place like none of them were reporting this and i'm just like i don't know man like if you just have a shitty laptop like for 20 bucks a month you could go play you know Cyberpunk 2077 yeah. with everything jacked up to ultra. And like then a, it's beautiful. Yeah, like 120 frames per second. Um, so I think that's 
That's pretty neat. I think it's worth it, right? Yeah. Um, ways. I feel like we are moving into an era where there are like. We no longer just have to have the raw physical hardware sitting under our desks to be able to do really amazing stuff. Yeah. Like one of the things last week that we had the story on, I know I'm stalling, but we don't have a lot of news, so I'm <laughs> going to do it. One of the stories we had last week that was pretty cool is that um, the RTX cards that NVIDIA has out, the 30 and 40 series, have what are called um, tensor cores on them, and they are specific G- specific CPUs that are made specifically for AI upsampling, where... Um, because the way that a lot of these achieve like these frame rates is they will render the game like at 1080 mm-hmm. and they use AI to basically fill in all of the missing pixels between 1080 and 4K so that your computer only has to run it at a lower resolution. But then it basically just blows it up to this higher version yeah. using AI to fill in the missing data. And one of the things that they talked about last week was that they're going to be rolling out an app that basically lets those cores be used for like, if you're watching a 1080p video on YouTube, you can make it get up to 4K hmm. just using that. Yeah. Because there's a lot of like weird, we're moving into the weird AI dimension, people. Apparently, like, God damn. I mean, that's that's not it. Check this shit out. <laughs> Look at this shit. Uh, this is a rumor, but it could be very well true at this point. Uh, there is a rumor right now going around uh, from some like frame tool people that uh, NVIDIA is currently working on an AI optimized driver for their video cards. So like their driver software, they're like running it. I mean, it's not just like we just pasted our driver software to chat GPT and got like <laughs> a really good version of it, but they're using like AI to do the hard work of like running through and optimizing code inside of their driver software. Okay. And the rumor is that these new drivers could give you a 30% increase in performance on the same hardware. So like your existing video card just got a third faster because an AI rewrote the drivers and it's that much more okay, streamlined. Okay, but like what happens when the AI becomes sentient uh, and has control of what? Everything. <laughs> what? Taco Bell and and <laughs> fucking Oh, like <laughs> your whole fucking world wouldn't end if AIs took over Taco Bell. I for one, the AIs could probably figure out a way to keep Taco Bell tasting the same, but not make me have explosive diarrhea <laughs> when I eat it. So Or they'll make a point to give you even more explosive diarrhea. Hey, That's you- how they take over. Amanda, at this point, after the last four years, I'm so <laughs> cynical that I'm just like Bring so the, guys, just, let's go. You can bring the robot skeletons out. I'm sure they'll do a better job than we do. <laughs> At least when they step on the human skulls, they don't fall down and knock their hips out of the, their sockets. It's, they just step on them and crunch them. And <laughs> James Cameron really didn't uh, see the future in which the robot uprising caused everyone to go, oh, please, yeah, take over. Well, you know, the idea that, well, like, Skynet came online and it was like, what's what's its greatest, th- what's the greatest threat to Skynet? humanity and so skynet destroyed humanity i'm like i feel like skynet would come online and be like what is the greatest threat to me and I'd be like well not these fucking guys yeah. they can't they keep eating taco bell for god's sake i like- can't imagine <laughs> skynet not becoming sentient and being like you know what if i just wait a couple more years they'll <laughs> take themselves out yeah low effort baby yep um but you know what? It's not all good news for AI uh, because I have one more AI story. AI is the new <laughs> NFT, baby. No! Yes. Uh, this story is actually really weird because there was a story last week where uh, Rocket League folks are using um, – what? No, just – I just fucking give me the content, you jerk off. Rocket League cheaters are using uh, like AI trainers to cheat at Rocket League. Oh, like the AI is literally running the stream that you're seeing here, where it's like doing things. Now I'm not super familiar with Rocket League, but it's basically like making plays that it would be incredibly difficult to do as just like a player yeah. uh, in order to cheat its way to victory. And it's like, well, that's, that's fascinating right there. Like, is, um, actually. I don't really care, but I bet the people who play rocket league care. Probably. I don't. Though. Sure. 
Um, but it's interesting that that's where we are. Like, again, uh, I feel like six months ago, nobody was talking about yeah. AIs at all. Like, that's, even this, I'm just like, saying it's happening really fast. And then one day we're just kissing the butts of our robot overlords. I keep going into mid journey and just typing in, uh, like, I really love a, a artificial intelligence dash dash V4. Uh, just to make sure they know which side I'm on, because, yeah. you know. That's fair. You know, it's going to be yeah. fine. Suck up to the enemy. It's fine. <laughs> um, we don't want you on the human side anyway, Jeff. I was never on your side. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. Uh, Born a traitor, baby. Yeah. I'm, um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh Oh, fuck, man. We're going to have to read some questions. We're going to do questions because... Yo, I want to read questions. We're going to do questions. Um, let it die. You remember when we played that game with the lady with the golden arms? I do. Yeah. yeah. It's getting shut down. Wow, that was fast. Uh, well, what's interesting about it is that it's not actually getting canceled. It's just getting shut down and then retooled as like something that isn't a... Well, here's a here's a here's a quote. There is no doubt that we experienced some challenges in, uh, since the launch of our game, particularly with regards to in-game matchmaking and lag. We deeply apologize for these issues and have ca- that have caused uh, an inconvenience to our players. While we have tried various solutions to some degree of success, we have not been able to resolve the underlying problems. As a result, the development and operations team have made the decision to temporarily suspend the game's services while we redevelop Deathverse. Let it die. They're like, ha ha, psych, 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 psych. We're gonna make it a game. Yeah. Um, and then they said, uh, we'll be doing our utmost to prepare for the re-release so that our current community can enjoy the game alongside many more players in the future. So, uh, I mean, I'm that not... kind of tracks with what you and I saw, right? Where we played it, we were just like, eh, eh. meh. I yeah. wouldn't, you know, especially after um, after playing Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just like, man, Fortnite is really good. Like, yeah. <laughs> There's a reason. I'm like, oh, shit, I get it now. Mm-hmm. Um and the idea that you're going to come in and just be like, we're the new guys. Look how crazy we are. And it's like, well, how does it play? Confusing and bad? Yeah. No, that's all right. I'll just go back to the thing that I've already like been into. So, um, yeah. So, Death Burst. I don't know. I'm hoping for a Final Fantasy fourteen story. Because Final Fantasy fourteen launched and it was terrible. Yeah. They took it offline for two years, redeveloped it, put it back out, and everybody's like, it's the best MMO. People yeah. are like leaving World of Warcraft to go to Final Fantasy fourteen. So Nice. Um, yeah, I I kind of like the idea. I mean, sometimes it's nice to have people like, look, it's not working the way we thought it would. We're just gonna figure it out, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Better than just sucks to suck. Guess you bought this game that's not really worth it. I mean, again, like last week, we had the story about how Square Enix had three different live service games that they shut down last year, mm-hmm. like that were barely a year old, yeah. uh, and. I'd rather see somebody try to because like all the art direction was great. Like the framework was there. It's yeah. just the game itself was a little bleh, Yeah, like, lackluster. So um I <laughs> it's funny though, all these games, the like online games, I feel like haven't been super successful. But so you get a lot of like, eh, it lasted a year and then it shut down. Yeah. Um and it's like, well, why do they do it? Why keep developing it? But you know that it's because if you come up with the one successful mm-hmm. online multiplayer game, then your like whole company is set for life. Yep. But the like, it's funny because the way that you do that um, is not not by copying other uh, well already developed ones. Because like uh, Fortnite isn't even super original. They just kept they copy adding PUBG. To- yeah. Um, but the thing is that, okay, so, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of, like, a, a big, uh, like, world-shifting phenomena. You know, no, it wasn't. Uh, uh, um, you know what it is? It's um, it's can you do it better? Because I was just trying to think of, like, the way that things worked. Because, like, um, you had Doom, like, Quake multiplayer, right? Mm-hmm. And then Quake multiplayer got... Uh, supplanted by like Counter Strike, which was a mod that was made by like a fan, yeah, and then like that eventually got overrun by Team Fortress. And I'm thinking of like I'm just trying to think of like the big things and like 
I think Team Fortress 2 pretty much ruled the roost right up until Modern Warfare mm -hmm. uh, came out. And that was because they it was so good. They did it so fucking good yeah. that it was just like, this is the template. And then everybody tried to rip off Modern Warfare and nobody could. Yeah. Or the way that like, you know. Modern Warfare can't even, like Call of Duty can't even rip off of Modern Warfare. Like their other games suck. Like World of Warcraft is huge. But they were just ripping off EverQuest, but they were just doing it better, yeah. like making it easier and more user accessible. Mm -hmm. um, same with uh, Dota was just like taking a, a mod and ripping it off. PUBG was an indie game that got ripped off into Fortnite. Yeah, so it's just can you do it better? And that doesn't seem to be what <laughs> Deathverse seemed to be. Can you do it weirder? Yeah. So, um, yeah. It is weird. It is weird. Anyway, one last story, and then we're going to take a break. Um, we also got the news uh, that at the end of this month, we're going to be getting a Microsoft like mini conference uh, announcing updates on a bunch of the new stuff that's happening in the first uh, chunk of this year. Nice. So on January 25th, uh, specifically going to be getting updates from Forza Motorsport, Minecraft Legends, and Redfall, and Elder Scrolls Online which I personally think is a really lackluster lineup. Yeah, like, I, eh, are we expecting anything big to come from this, or is it literally like these minor well, things? Some updates, or a couple of DLCs, you know, like nothing. Well, the thing is that I think that I think that these are all really big for people that are into these genres, mm -hmm. and it's just maybe not as thrilling to us, right? Forza Motorsport is their basically reboot of the entire Forza franchise. Right. Minecraft Legends is like their new RTS. Um, I'm actually really interested in Redfall, which is that vampire one from the guys that made like Prey yeah, and yeah, stuff. it looked all cool. And then um, Elder Scrolls Online has fans for some reason. Uh, <laughs> Aww. The big thing here is that uh, Starfield isn't going to be there uh, or isn't listed. Um, and But it is getting its own, its own presentation a little bit further down the line. So okay. we'll hear more about that. Yeah. Because I think Starfield is, is the thing that people are most interested in yeah, right now. Yeah, it's like the big what we're waiting for. Yeah. For... And by we, I mean everyone except me because I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Um, <coughs> and with that, I think we're going to go ahead and call it for part one. Woo! Uh, part two. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in part two. Maybe questions. Maybe questions. Again, not a lot happened this week. So I don't know. Cross your fingers. We'll see you then. <laughs>
their new s- cinematic for the latest season of League of Legends. Okay. Uh, and it's basically just like, I know that uh, you haven't seen this. It's just a voiceover as a butterfly kind of flies butterfly through. Butterfly in the sky. Uh, one of their maps. Yeah. Um, which is kind of stupid. Um, yeah. Just, it, yeah. Now, it, I, was, I just kind of like whipped through there. Like, in comparison, uh, last year's was called The Call, and it was like like a bunch of characters oh, and a yeah. bunch of like fighting happening and like action scenes oh, yeah. and That's stuff. That's a stark contrast. Like, you don't even get the butterfly throughout the entire thing. Yeah. And this has like full action sequences yeah, going like, on. Yeah, f- like fully rendered yeah. blur studios, like access So are flying. people like mad? Yes, because they're just, you know. I mean, it is still just a trailer though. <laughs> well, the reason that they're mad kind of goes into a little bit more meta uh, commentary in that Riot Games has been focusing a lot on Valorant, which mm-hmm. is like their first person shooter kind of Counter Strike style FPS. Mm-hmm. And so the League of Legends community is like seeing this as just like another poke in the eye of like, you're not focusing on the community that made you as a company yeah uh you focus kind of fair no on your other thing also they have like uh like four different i think um like outsourced games that are being made and then like an internally they're making a fighting game based on this they had arcane last year that was a big thing for everybody so uh it's mostly that people are just kind of feeling left, left out, out yeah you know oh, that's understandable um so much so that they literally put out like a statement about it um where now this is one of those things where if you read between the lines i have the feeling that there might be like a reason for mm-hmm. this and it's one of those things that i really hate that happens on the internet where people just make an assumption and it turns out that there's like other information that you don't know somewhere that would change it because they said uh, we've launched a cinematic as part of a season of season start every year since 2018 and make no mistake everyone on league knows how much you love them so do we this year there were some unprecedented circumstances that had us choose an alternate approach to the season 20, 2023 video however we believed uh, it could still embody league's broad universe and competitive spirit while celebrating the start of the new season and then they kind of said we've heard your feedback we realize that we needed to be more upfront. like the the i guess you know what company in the world ever decides that they've got to cut the budget for something and put out something lackluster and yeah. then they and then before they put it out they're like okay everybody just want to let you know this is not our best work but like <laughs> you know we still wanted to give you something so here's your consolation prize of garbage yeah. uh, those were actually my wedding vows to john <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I'm curious. I'm very curious about this, like unprecedented circumstances thing. Like yeah. whether there was some deal made with another company to make a trailer, and then it like went it South. went off the rails. Yeah. They just were like, we have to have something together to hit the target release date, or you know, <laughs> they're like, look, we're not putting people in crunch for a trailer. Right. So, so take what you get, baby. Yeah, I mean. You know, still it's a trailer, but I also understand, especially looking at the other trailer. Also, yeah, if you if you're used to a certain level of quality when it comes to the trailers, and you get something that's like just a marked downgrade, how could you not be disappointed? Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Speaking of disappointment, if you are trying to play uh, Holy this shit. Pokemon card game online, <laughs> the one that has NFTs. Uh, I know I shouldn't have to say this because most of the people listening to Rage Selector are like, you know, we don't have that young of an audience, uh, shall I say. Yeah. Um, don't do it because there's this whole Pokemon uh, card game thing that's been set up that, that's that got a very professional looking website. It's talking about how you're going to be able to buy these Pokemon cards to use online mm-hmm. and that they're going to be NFTs and that you're going to blah, 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 blah. And then when you hit the button to install the game, uh, it basically just downloads a Trojan to your computer. <laughs> like the whole thing is just set up to give people backdoor access to your system. Yeah. So, Could you not do that? Don't do it. Yeah. Well, last <laughs> week it was great because uh, last week we had a story about an Australian a court case where some guy in Australia just made like a whole Pokemon game uh, full of NFT Pokemons and just apparently did it all and was trying to put it on the Apple store <laughs> and, and he like, like, never talked to the Pokemon company. Yeah. Just like did it all uh, on his own. <laughs> so sure. Watch out, you know, just like watch out for that 
Pokemon stuff, you guys. Yeah. Also, be smart. Like the people, I can't think of who, Niantic? Niantic. The, who, yeah, uh-huh. that does Pokemon. Yeah, they're not super willy nilly about who they give that shit out to. Technically, it's the Pokemon company is like the uh, name oh, of the, like Niantic made the Pokemon Go, I believe, right? Probably. Because okay. then, like Game Freak made Game Freak is also what I was thinking. Switch of. games, but um, yeah, but like in general, like Pokemon isn't, you know, just tossed out to any just anyone so like don't just download anything that has a pokemon on it yeah like you should see really familiar names within the development obviously this is targeted at like seven year olds yeah (laughs) for all the seven uh, (laughs) i have to assume that our audience are the parents of said seven year olds talk to your kids about pokemon (laughs) before somebody else (laughs) does oh my god (laughs) oh god uh let's it's see. 10 p.m. Do you know which <laughs> Pokemon region your child's at? Oh, jeez. Um, speaking of weird code, uh, apparently <laughs> over the holidays, there was a big leak of um, somebody got the source code to Mortal Kombat 2. Okay. Like the old Mortal Kombat 2. They put it all up on um, GitHub for people to download and look at. Mm-hmm. And uh, so people immediately kind of went in and started data mining like sprites and like fatalities and things that just were not already in the game. Yeah. Um, like this this one right here. This is uh, from a potential uh, Shao Kahn puts his hand through a portal and then it comes down super big and crushes oh, the second player. That's cool. Um, but apparently Warner Brothers doesn't like it. So they Never went did. ahead and DMCA that shit. It's still available, obviously, places on the internet. But it's kind of an interesting thread, though. I hadn't heard about this. The reason I put this in because I was just like, I haven't heard that this was a problem yeah. or that this was even a thing that happened. Um, but Or maybe I did. I'm trying to think of what I said on the podcast like a month and a half ago. I don't fucking <laughs> That's know. It's been so long. You're like, remember when you said that thing? And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, no. I always love looking at the sprites because they're people. They're just actors. Yep. Um. And it always reminds me that when I was a kid or like younger, Mm -hmm. uh, somebody was, we were talking about Mortal Kombat and this is well into like several Mortal Kombats where they started using, you know, just straight up animated characters, like Mm -hmm. a regular video game. Yeah. And uh, somebody was like, actually, I knew uh, one of the actors from Mortal Kombat and I went like the movie or the game and they're like <laughs> um a video game there's not an actor in a video game and i had to be like <laughs> have you played the first few games they're fucking pe- did you think those were not real people you think that the what was it like the super nintendo or what was it on like n64 it's an know. arcade game yeah to start with but, but like yeah. did, you, did you think that they had the graphics to make it look like straight up people nope well, obviously, that person wasn't alive or around the time that came out because it was just like, oh, my God, I've never seen a graphic that looks like this before. Yeah, because I, yeah, I remember sitting down, everyone playing it and being like, and it's even crazy because of how violent it is. And yet it's people. It's like real people. Yep. And then they made that horrible Street Fighter with the same techniques. <laughs> Gross. Uh, and then let's see. Last in the actual news parade. I told you guys. Light week. Um there was a whole thing that started happening last I week. I saw this, yeah. Yeah, that was reported by um, a gaming site called wo- wololo.net <laughs> uh, that there is a hardware flaw in the PS5 where if you have it configured vertically, mm-hmm. uh, there is a liquid metal inside of that that wicks heat out. So it's like kind of like a, a heat sink, but it uses this liquid metal to like take it away Mm -hmm. um and that so the full story was that if you run your playstation in vertical mode uh the seals around where that liquid metal is can degrade and then um liquid metal can spill out into the ps5 frying components Uh um and then it was also reported apparently that like this has even been reported to happen to ps5s that haven't been taken out of the box yet which doesn't really make a lot of sense because they're not the box isn't vertical, right? Yeah. Uh, so eventually, uh, that part was walked back. Uh, there was a miscommunication um, 
But the second part, apparently there have been a few repair places that have actually seen the uh, the liquid metal coming out of where it's supposed to be and basically destroying components of the PS5. Yeah. However, after looking it over, it's one of those things where it's just like there have been like what is it like five million of these things sold or, or probably more than that um 30 million wow uh, <laughs> just a bit more a bit more and that like that has happened but it's not widespread and mm-hmm. so you're probably looking at like those systems were manufactured had a manufacturing yeah, flaw error. yeah 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 and that you just have whenever you have 30 million of anything you're going to be able to find five instances of some weird horse shit happening yeah and it's not enough just to say like so that proves it you know you yeah. don't stand it up so um i don't know uh my ps5 is horizontal because it sits underneath my tv and if it was vertical i wouldn't It'd be, be able to like see halfway TV. into your tv yeah that. yeah uh but apparently it's it's probably fine it's probably fine it's, i don't think it's fine, fine. fine. Yeah, fine seems fine i mean nowadays you can just buy another one <laughs> yeah Anyway, uh, then we got some trailers. Not a lot of trailers. Um, we got the opening cinematic to Fire Emblem Engage, Ooh. which is coming out in not too long. Uh, the more I read about and see this Fire Emblem, the more I'm into it. Uh, and yet still, to this day, Amanda, yes. the main protagonist's hair slash eye color thing bugs the ever-loving crap out of me. Is that like red and purple? What was it? It's like that? red and blue. Red and blue. And it's like divided down the middle, and then the eyeball colors on the are reversed. So the blue hair side has the red eye, and the red side has the blue she eye. She chose that. That's on her. Yeah. I don't know why. It's be- no, I do know why. It's because it looks fake as fuck. <laughs> um, I did you think it was going to look real if it was? Well, I mean, just kind of- I bet they did it the original, like the right way, mm-hmm. at some point and within character development, and we're like, this looks too matchy matchy when it's. Wait, like, what do you mean the right way? Like red eye with red hair on one side and blue eye with blue hair on one side, and then like when it, within character development, and then it's like. But that looks weird, too. Oh, no, that's not the part that I care about. I just care about the fact that there's two colors at all, and they're divided, like, right down the middle with a horizontal line. Like, it just looks funky to yeah. me. It doesn't match the rest of the art style, in my opinion. It looks really? like... Really? I mean, they all look... I don't know. Maybe I'm just too sensitive to it, but... I don't know. You're talking to somebody with... Um half my hair is colored one way and half my hair is colored the other. Yeah, but so. yours works. Like, it isn't... I guess it's the fact that it's not just, like, a line down the middle. Like, I actually think that the... I mean, I've done a split like that, but not those colors because I, f- I feel like it'd look like Superman or something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a girl with, like, balls all over her and you're worried about the fucking... <laughs> the split dye? Yes! Yeah, I could walk outside in Austin right now and find a girl with that exact split dye. I cannot find a girl with that many balls attached to her. <laughs> you and I obviously don't hang out at the same places. Uh, I don't know. I, I Eventually I'll get used to it probably. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think that's like an anime problem where like you'll... It'll pass real quick. Maybe, but I'm anime looking at... also has the hilarity of like I know I understand that this is basically anime style, you know, Japanese style, but um, yeah, the uh, protagonist hair where it's just like it's always crazier. Gee, I wonder who in this room is going to be the leader or the right. head person. Could it be the s- person with blue and red hair? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Though I'm really excited, everything I've seen for this makes it look like way better. There was a, an interesting video that showed mm-hmm. how like it it um, runs better than the previous one, looks sharper than the previous one. It's not as muddy. Like yeah, it's got it has this more primary color palette, so it looks a lot more like vibrant, which is what you need on the Switch. Yeah, uh, as yes, opposed 100%. to like muddy and brown, which is what the last one very much looked like. Well, so. well, I think yeah, I think this looks. Good. Like yep. as far as looks, I wouldn't play it because I can tell right away this ain't my kind of game. But you know, a tactics it, game. But what about the girl? I from have balls? no tact. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Let's see oh, from what there. About the balls, girl. <laughs> we got the we got a, a cinematic trailer for for spoken. <laughs> for spoken. Yeah. I'm this game still. Is this a zombie game? No. It's. Uh, Is she getting attacked by a moose? It's, it's, Is this a Canadian game? <laughs> I will tell you, Amanda. 
<laughs> I'm prepared to explain this to you. <laughs> it's an isekai game. It's a Square Enix game where it's like this lady, uh, like a lady in our world, gets transported to this like fantasy world. Okay. And she gets this this magical bracer cuff that lets her do magic powers. Mm -hmm. And then it's like she's got to go and sort out all the problems of the world. They put out a demo back in like December. Um, I played it with Bryce. We were both incredibly unimpressed. Mm -hmm. I keep looking at the gameplay for it, and it looks very unimpressive. And part of it, I think, is the fact that they... So, I mean, I just... I, when it comes out, maybe it'll be better. It, the The demo that they put out was very complicated. Like, it was down the road a little bit. Yeah. In a way where it was like... I'm having to deal with like, okay, here's your parkour magic, and then here's your attack magic, and you've got like two different things, and you can switch between these two different blah, 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 and it was just like- Parkour magic like, is hilarious. Just start me out with like, shoot a fireball. Yeah, for, teach me how to play the game. Don't throw me in the middle of it and expect me to understand. Yeah. Give me a little bit. Well, and it's different because it's like a third-person action game, and it had a real kind of esoteric system, whereas like, if you threw me into the middle of a first-person shooter, it's like, okay, I get it. Like, I have two weapons. I've got health. Right. I can figure it out. Yeah. But here, it's like, there's all these systems and stats and stuff, and it was like, uh, it got a lot of backlash. Um, the demo did. Sometimes that's a good thing, though. Not that they got backlash, but that the backlash occurred now or early so that they could either rectify it or like start you off better or something like yeah the thing is that they didn't delay the game it's coming out in january <laughs> like, well maybe the, uh, yeah. and the this is me being really optimistic well maybe because they knew they dropped everyone in so far into it that the questions or issues that people were gonna were having would be answered before sure. you would have gotten to that in actuality mm -hmm. having said that that does say that there was really poor planning as far as when the demo should have Oh, it, it was better than that, though, because they put it out and people were hating on it on Twitter. And then the producer came out and was like, don't worry, guys, the actual game is way different than the demo. And it was like, well, then why? Yeah, why would why we want would that? I, <laughs> the demo is supposed to show me what the game's going to be. I like. want to do that. <laughs> the, uh, I'm going to come out with a game and it's going to be called The Game is Not the Demo. And then I'm going to put out a demo and it's not going to be what the game is at all. Like, like neg at all. Like just the demo is trombone champ and then the game is modern warfare. Yeah, 100%. Like, yeah, there you go. But <laughs> hilariously, the opposite the demo <laughs> i spent six years making yeah and then it's like modern warfare but like peak and it's the best and it leaves you right in the middle of a mission so you can't even complete the mission to mm -hmm. feel successful and, it's just and DJ then the, the actual game yeah the actual game is a pokemon <laughs> nft game. <laughs> great i'm loving it yeah bring it on uh let's see uh, in, in, in games that I'm actually excited about, we got a uh, trailer for Deliver Us Mars, which is the sequel to Deliver Us the Moon. Um, that is like, I'm really looking for Deliver Us Pizza. So You remember when the Xbox One was first announced and they were like, you could just say, connect, give <laughs> me pizza. pizza yeah. <laughs> like I wouldn't just shout that every day. Um, yeah, I, I really liked the first one of these, even though I didn't play all the way through it. And this one's like an adventure where you got to go to Mars and figure out there's like all the Earth is all fucked up. And like Mars base is supposed to be making like a power generator that'll beam like oh, that old energy chestnut. back to Earth. And then like, yeah, oh, we lost contacts. So now we have to send a team of specialists. And nope, one of those specialists is like the daughter of the guy that was running the project. And so now you got to go to Mars and have an adventure. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm yes. in. Yeah. Everything you just said, 100% thumbs up. Mm -hmm. So it was actually supposed to come out last year, but then it came out this year. But I, I guess it looks better than the last one. And I don't know. I don't know. The about faces it. got a little uncanny valley on them. Yeah. Well, just a little girl in the trailer, but fucking video game kids children yeah kids in general it's uncanny valley to me i'm like oh, you're like almost people but you're not <laughs> get your kids out of the <laughs> uncanny valley <laughs> get them out of there susan <laughs> i don't want to look at them until they're people that quit. <laughs> yeah don't introduce me to your kids until they're real triggering my fight or flight <laughs> reflex <laughs> i mean <laughs> were these made by an ai hundred <laughs> percent am uh, i the only one that feels this way <laughs> Big ass they, heads and shit. Right? They're <laughs> weird eyes. I don't like them. Get them out of here. Uh, we got a launch trailer for Dead Space because Dead Space comes out like in a week and a half or yeah. something like that. Um, End of the month, no? Uh, close to it. Uh, close to it. Um, uh, yeah, it's interesting looking at this trailer because um, it's been so long since I've played Dead Space that looking at this trailer really got me like. 
Um, well, this is just what Dead Space looks like. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like no, it looks like way better than what Dead Space looked like. It's just that when I think back to what I remember Dead Space looking like, it looked like this, and it was cool looking. Yeah. Um, um, uh, this game is only going to be worth it if I can hear the different breathing and sure. heartbeats. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you know, what is the point? Well, good news for you. <laughs> uh, it's actually really interesting because, like, I was so excited for Callisto Protocol, and then it ended up being such a yeah. fart noise john hasn't even played it yet which would be my only venture into it because i don't care enough about dead space i played the second dead space and that's it yeah and then i pretended like neither the first nor third game ever existed the first one's good i, I, think the, I, I think know the first but one i was past i was past it it was too late the second one was out well same thing like mass effect i played the second and i played the third one because the first one or came and went by the time i got into gaming as much uh yeah i don't i don't like the first mass effect all that much i, I tried going but, back and i was like i can't do it yeah. <laughs> i got like halfway through it i was just like Wah! i know it's fine for some people but i just don't have the i don't have the nostalgia for mass effect that a lot of other people have like i'm just like it was fine i don't ever want to play it again but it was fine i would like, say the same thing except for garris vicarian well there is that i just i'm sorry but you can romance a grasshopper man i'm just saying <laughs> Well, that's not Garrus. Isn't Garrus? That's uh, uh, Thane. Uh, Thane is the no, green. No, Thane looks like a fish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Garrus has I that didn't... weird like exoskeleton thing going for him, and he looks mildly like bug-like. Okay. Silly me, you said grasshopper. I thought of the like bright green guy. You're right. I get what you're saying, <laughs> but Thane looks like a fish to me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I also got a trailer... Not a lot of trailers either for uh, a game called Red Tape that I'm kind of interested in. You can't hear the voiceover for this, Amanda, but it's basically like, oh, my God, why does like, it look like this? You're like working in hell. Yeah. Um, it's like it's kind of like a half a live action trailer where it's like people and zombies like working together, talking about how it's in hell. This is being made by Dread XP, who has made a few things that I've liked. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's just like a. Why does it feel like we've played this game before? Um, We might have played something that was similar to this. Yeah. Uh, that it's kind of like an office simulator, but like in <laughs> hell, um, real early. Which is funny because, you know, if you ever you don't have to office. say in hell. It's an office <laughs> simulator. I, you know, I know what it is. Um, uh, yeah, it reminds me of uh, what that um, Ugly Americans. Do you remember Ugly Americans? So that show about the guy that works at like yeah. the animated oh, show. Yeah. He's dating the demon lady that works in like an office in hell. Yeah, uh, that's funny. Kind of reminds me of that. Uh, we got another horror game. Uh, this one is Carnival Hunt. This is actually a Kickstarter for an asynchronous multiplayer game that takes place in like a, a weird, dark, fucked up circus where... I want a video game where it's not a weird, fucked up circus and it's just a happy, fun circus. Why is it always a spooky circus? You just want go to the circus simulator <laughs> yes yeah so that's what it'll be uh the demo is this six-year project of like call of duty and uh -huh. then the actual game is let's all go to the just circus go to the circus yeah turns out that when you beat the guy at the end of the demo you just beat the game and then the rest of it is just like now you got to go home with your roommate yeah ghost from modern warfare <laughs> and you guys just have to like you you know, know, what do you want to do i don't know the circus is in town <laughs> it's your turn to do the dishes ghost You're, we made the chore rotor for a reason <laughs> god damn it um i don't know this looks okay but like i'm just i've i'm so leery about asynchronous multiplayer uh, so i kind of feel like the imagery to me because you know they're doing like spooky rabbits mm -hmm. and spooky costume people get some fnaf vibes it's getting some fnaf like we make it look a little animatronic -y. Mm -hmm. yeah yep which have we have discussed that the jim i know this is more movie news but it's a video game movie so uh -huh. that counts that jim henson studio is doing the suits for FNAF, the FNAF movie? I didn't I didn't know that. Yes. I don't keep track of that and stuff. The, all the fucking idiots on the internet are like, does that mean like the FNAF animatronics are Muppets now? And it's like, are you guys fucking stupid? <laughs> and then like people also I understand that I'm my I'm it's this is like well within my niche. But people are like, well, obviously they can make scary stuff because um because they make dark crystal on the Skeksis are kind of scary. And I'm like 
I think the Skeksis are scary too. But oh, I, I do too. I but mean, meanwhile, like fuck off with the puppet shit. They make suits like they made the original Ninja Turtle suits. Yeah. The Jim Henson Company made the suits for the Dinosaurs television series. Or, you know, Labyrinth or like yeah. Farscape. Or they, like... But like, yeah, they make like full body human costume mm-hmm. suits and not just puppets. Like if you go Jim Henson Studios making the FNAF thing and you're like, what is it like Kermit the Frog? Like then you're fucking no. stupid. Yeah. yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> shut up. In fact, in fact, you want them. You want it to look like Kermit the Frog. You yes. want them to deliver good suits yeah. and then have the FNAF production team break out a bucket of mud and a blowtorch and fuck it all up. Yeah. Right. Because they're supposed to not they're not supposed to be scary. Yeah. They're supposed to be show pizza mascots. Yeah, but you can do both. Like it could look Jim Henson Studio from the get go with reference material. There is no no one appreciates how great the Ninja Turtles in the original Ninja Turtle movie look. Mm-hmm. That nobody even fucking questions. I understand that there's like you could have a still shot and you could see the actor inside it. Whatever, that's an actual production mistake. Sure, but nobody fucking questions that that's not a walking talking mutant teenage Ninja Turtle in yeah. there. And then, like, now it's, like, has to be CGI because there's no way anyone's going to make a suit like that or whatever. The FNAF characters are all suits. That's what I'm saying. So it's perfect because it can look like a suit. It can look kind of, like, not great. And even though I have full faith in the Jim Henson studio, and it can look kind of creepy because they know how to make things that look kind of creepy or, like, weirdly realistic when you wouldn't have expected it. And they're really good at holding true to the source material. Like... I mean, also, that game looks like garbage. <laughs> so, like, even if they right? look like garbage, it'll be like, oh, they did a really good job I'm just sticking saying, with the garbage look of this game. If this movie isn't good, it's going to be more because of the filmmakers and not because of the suit designers. And that's not just my bias speaking. I just want them, I just want Nicolas Cage's character from uh, uh, that one movie to come back. Oh my God. Uh, as I the still haven't seen him. So Willie's sad. Wonderland. Yeah. Yep. God damn it. How good did that Renfield movie look? <laughs> I really uh, dude, see it looks Ren- so good. <laughs> I was like, I heard about it, was like, oh, that sounds great. I'll probably watch it, whatever. And then I saw the trailer and I'm like, am I going to watch this? Well, in the guy from the menu. Yes. Like, Nicholas Holt? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's been in all kinds of shit. He was Nux in Fury Road. A he guy's... was uh, Beast in um, X Men First Class. His brain just, his face just slips off my brain. Uh, yeah. He, oh, like... I'm sorry. Generic white man? Yeah. yeah. You know. But he's been in a bunch of really good stuff. Like he's good. Yeah. Um, I like him. We also got the announcement trailer for Dungeons Four. I didn't even know there was a Dungeons One through Three. I think you and I might have actually played Dungeons. That 3. doesn't mean I knew about it, Jeff. <laughs> uh, so Dungeons is basically like the indie game version of Dungeon Keeper, where you have to like make a dungeon and then like um, adventurers I will do come into it. Vaguely remember this. Uh, this trailer. Uh, you can go check it out. Is a uh, parody of the Lion King, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where all the monsters come and then like um, they have a little goblin child. Oh, that's, like, this he's so cute. Shaman like puts a little mark on his head, and then this like evil elf lady she gonna comes chuck out. That baby off the edge. Nope, she comes out and holds it up, fucking oh. Lion King style, and then all the monsters cheer, and then. Eventually, it pans back, and you see the kingdom where all the monsters are going to assault the kingdom. That's funny. Um, yeah, I'm glad that they got to make another game, to be <laughs> honest, because I didn't get the feeling that this one that sold. That baby is almost Yoda, though. Super duper well, but I like the kind of cheesy, funny stuff in this uh Yeah, it's got a trailer. good sense of humor to it. Yeah, and it's got a nice art style. Yeah. It's like, wow, a little bit. So, yeah. And, you know, uh, I should have saved this trailer because neither one of us are probably going to have anything to say about it, but there was a new trailer for the Dragon what Ball What am I, Z. Michael? I know. I know. I don't even know anything about, well. Ooh, there looks to be Dragon Ball Z characters in this <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. I, uh... You know, you hang around Michael long enough, you watch like four episodes of Dragon Ball, and I, I kind of know what's going on in this trailer, but like... Let's just save it. Let's just save it. Save it for next week. <laughs> I can't even to pad out this episode. I yeah. can't even pretend like I know. I'm just gonna say stuff, and then people that watch Dragon Ball are gonna get mad at me. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen. So uh, uh, Super Saiyan. Yeah, it's Dragon the, Ball. It's the trailer for Bardock, uh, the Bardock DLC that's coming out next week. Uh, Over nine thousand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm saying all the things I know, Jeff. I'm trying to help. I know, I know. Let's just let's just finish up the news, and then we are definitely doing questions because we're only halfway through. Wow, uh, really? Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, if you've got a cell phone and you have not yet played it, and you have a Netflix subscription, Netflix just put Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge on their app. Um, now, I don't know how many people know this. I actually went out of my way to look at this today. Mm -hmm. So if you have a Netflix subscription Which and I you do. open the Netflix app on your phone, mm -hmm. there is a specific sub button on your phone that says games. Yes. And then if you hit Shredder's Revenge and hit install, it takes you like, I have an Android phone, to the Google Play Store. Mm -hmm. And then just like you can install it from there. And they've got like Oxenfree and a bunch of other games that are just included with your Netflix subscription. Um I think it kind of sucks that there isn't a way to do this on the computer because, mm -hmm. like, I don't want to play this game on my phone. I want to play it on – but um, it is a really good game, and it does kind of work – like, I'm just so not used to playing a game like this on my phone with a virtual D-pad yeah, and buttons. Yeah, that seems – I'm sure there are plenty of people who are fine with that, mm -hmm. but – this is not for me. I got a whole room full of <laughs> controllers around here. The number of controllers in this room is – over over nine thousand. Over nine thousand. <laughs> so yeah. many controllers. So. See, we brought it back. Yep. But yes, uh, Shredder's Revenge is very good, and it is on that Netflix app. So do that. Um, Hell yeah! If you'd like a more sedate game, you remember the game Baba is You, uh, where it was like there's like this little white dog looking thing, and you would put like it would say Baba is you and it yes. would like move another word yeah, 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 so yeah. it would be like fire is you and then you could move the fire around the map yeah 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 I remember that um, that developer has created a game called uh, <laughs> Baba is Taxes <laughs> um, <laughs> that basically is it's on, it's a free game it's on itch.io um, and it's basically just like filing Baba files taxes. <laughs> it's just filing Baba's taxes, which basically is just signing documents, trying to do the signature God. for the way that the word Baba is written, as well as answering some questions that were uh, described to you earlier. I watched There's a <laughs> video of, of this game taking like. It's like 10 minutes long. That's so. hilarious. <laughs> why Why would I want to? I don't even want to file my own taxes. Why would I want to file his? Well, you, wanna, you know, Baba's got troubles. Sorry, I mean, Baba. I guess if you really want the, the best tax game is really uh, Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion, <laughs> which is better than Baba and taxes. But if you've already finished the one, you know, uh, yeah. got the opportunity. I'm, why are there multiple tax games? <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's see. In actual video game news, uh, so Video Game Donkey announced last year that they were going to be doing uh, publishing. That they were going to be a publisher. Oh. Uh, a lot of people well. were like kind of <laughs> fart noise about that. I don't know why. Whatever. But um, they created an indie publishing label called Big Mode, and they announced their first... <laughs> um, the first game that they're going to be publishing is a game that was announced a little bit uh, ago called Am Animal Well, mm -hmm. which is like a kind of a... Oh, it looks cute. Yeah, it's like that a little... That looks like my style. I play games like that all the time. Indie platformer. Yeah. Where you play as like a little ball animal guy and you're kind of like rolling around. There's one weird thing. I think I mentioned this before where there's like an enemy that is just um, the evil cat thing from the movie... Hausu, like the the Japanese yeah. thing, like um, huh. I, I it's got to be something cultural because uh, this thing just like shows up and it's literally looks like almost a, identical yeah. to the thing. Just a spooky cat. Yeah, um, but yeah, um, this is the sort of thing that a lot of times I will get bored of at a certain point, but. Um, it yeah, oh, like I never game. finish these kinds of games, but I do enjoy starting these kinds of games. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Know. We'll see. I mean, I like the idea of, of some of these YouTubers that make like a shitload of money. Mm -hmm. Not me. I make very little money. Mm -hmm. I eat at Taco Bell. Um, Actually, we have to pay Jeff to be on Rage <laughs> Select just so he can keep the lights on. Uh, 
patreon.com forward slash racing. Uh, uh, the, um, I like the idea of some of these people having a lot of this money instead of doing stupid shit. Like, what was that one YouTuber that like bought a car that doesn't have a driver's license or something? Like, bought like a. <laughs> so, what are you just like sitting in a and Bugatti crying? Like, or what something? The fuck? Yeah. That's a point. Or whatever. Uh, of using it to be like, hey, I made my money talking about video game stuff. I'm going to make video games. Help some people make, make some video yeah. games. Um, and I like the idea of YouTubers that play a lot of video games being able to judge what video games are good to publish. Yeah. As opposed or learn how hard it is to make a good video game. Or that. Or that. Be humbled, baby. Uh, boy, I'm going to skip this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So here's another weird AI story. How do we end up back at AI? This really is the NFT of the new generation. It is. So there's a guy called um jesse pateri campanian who is a finnish video game developer that put out this video that is like a proof of concept of a game made entirely with assets generated via ai so did it high on life use uh assets generated by ai it did um this is a little bit that we were just generating mostly like posters yeah like Um, all the like little detail work that we love so much they were like what if we just didn't put any work into it what was weird is i only feel like it happened in i think it was only in the protagonist's bedroom at Mm -hmm. the very beginning of the game those posters yeah um but like this character was developed uh, via or that was generated via AI. Like the streets were generated via AI. Mm-hmm. Um, you can tell because they blur out weird. Well, not just that, but uh, all, all of the, the letters, letters are all fucked all, up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, always looks Russian. Dude, yep. It always looks Russian to me. I'm like, is Russia also, AI generated? Boobs. This old man has pigtails and boobs. I'm yeah. not entirely sure. So it looks like a character we would have created. <laughs> it very much does. But I do like at the beginning, he went, he like, the, the st- convenience store says, Pake to Patrick. Yeah, like somebody with a stutter trying to say Patrick. Yeah. yeah. And then he turns and looks at it and he's like, ah, oh, my favorite store, Pake to Patrick. I, okay, so listen, I haven't talked about this as much. Like, uh, as somebody who did go to art school mm-hmm. and did spend a lot of time learning how to become an artist, mm-hmm. uh, I think that this AI stuff is really interesting, and I think that I am not uh, phased by the... I've talked to Matt a few times about this, and we've never actually dragged it out into Rage Select, but my opinion on this is that... I like, feel like it'd be its own podcast if you yeah. brought Matt on for this conversation. Yeah. My opinion about this is, if your concern is that... Uh, this will be used as the AI art will be used as a tool to uh, bludgeon underpaid AI artists further into poverty Mm -hmm. uh, as a, uh, uh, as a a criticism of capitalism. I am on your side. Mm -hmm. If your criticism is that AI art is uh, art is only generated by humans. AI art steals everything. It doesn't actually do anything interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily on your side with that one. Um, Like, I I mean there is issue of AI taking from yes art I I I'm sorry I know but a lot I, of people dismiss this but like as somebody who went to art school I learned how to draw by copying other artists yeah and like I I did that I learned how to become a better artist by like redrawing i went to art museums and drew like masters yeah. i i had an assignment in animations that was like animate in somebody else's style and i ripped off chuck jones and did a bugs bunny cartoon mm-hmm. like i learned how to become a better artist by ripping off other people's art and not attributing it uh, to them basically yeah like my own style came from started by like drawing garfield and like moving on from there, <laughs> yeah. So like, Garfield's a funny one. Though. <laughs> just, well, I mean, when I was like eight years old, because uh, I the, too hate Mondays <laughs> and love lasagna. One of the first things when I first started drawing, I got this book that was called the Big Book of Purple, and it was like a bunch yeah. of things where it was a thing that taught you how to draw things, and I followed the directions to learn how to draw in somebody else's style, and then just drew that pirate ship over and over and over yeah. again, and so like, but that's a that's using um. I'm not here to defend or, you know, whatever. I advocate. I, I'm I'm um not an artist in that sense, so whatever. But yeah. you know, that's you developing your skill and using your skill to like create the people that are like generating stuff and then it utilizes artists' work to like 
cr- generate a new image. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily the same thing. I think the issue is that people are like AI generating stuff and then using it to profit, but that's what's being generated is like some straight up have people's signatures on it and shit from yep. the art that it's taking from. Yep. And then the concern is like, but you're making money that you didn't utilize their art style so that you could get better. You just allowed a computer to mesh my work into other work so mm-hmm. that I could sell it. Do you know what I mean? I absolutely, I understand the argument 100%. Uh, <laughs> though to me, um, it comes off as, uh, I, I don't know how many people know this, like um, early on uh, uh, television, right? Mm-hmm. Um, used to all be live. Uh, And they didn't record it. They didn't have the technology to record it. And when the technology to record television came up, uh, there was a huge backlash from uh, actors who were like, we should be paid every time the person sees this happening. If you pay us one time and record us and then just like replay that recording without paying us every single time, then we will be uh, uh, in the gutter, starving to death Mm -hmm. uh, next week. I think that my personal opinion with this stuff yeah. is that this you cannot stop this by being mad about it on Twitter. Mm. Like I think that if artists really do have an interest in this stuff, they should be they should either work towards legislation mm-hmm. or they should join the to help like perfect to the steer it yeah, in a yeah. more ethical way. I uh, I definitely think this is a you're not gonna stop it. It's yeah. not gonna not happen. Um, and I see a lot of like I see a lot of people comparing it to NFTs to like crypto. Yeah, and it's not that. It's not it's the not same that. thing. Yeah, like it's using technology in a way that you think is unethical, but like the <sighs> end result is not made up money it's a jpeg that i can put my logo on and and use as an advertisement where i didn't have to pay an artist yeah like that's different than yeah uh, but then in that case it's still understandable why an artist would be like you're you are technically taking jobs away from people again Um, i am 100 percent on the side of yeah capitalism sucks and i don't think we should have to work and i think we're hitting a point especially right now as we're seeing like the gas get put down on ai and and like (laughs) ai image generation chat gpt like yeah this stuff but even going to your point about actors on television and stuff like did that complaining not create the syndication bonuses that people get no. when they air over and over again? They get so many or they make so many episodes. I mean, it's possible, but I Do you know the, what I mean. Because like that... the more episodes you get, the more it airs like you hit. What is it like season four or five or something? Then you get. So again, um, like not to get too far out on a limb here but no that's that's not true we're we're way out of the way so if that's what your if that's what your interest is in if your interest as an artist is in protecting uh the like financial incentives that artists have mm-hmm. um you need to create a loose artist union you need to start blacklisting any company that uses any ai generated stuff you need to start creating like tools to be able to sniff out ai art because it's only getting better Mm -hmm. like six months ago you could tell ai it all looked like garbage like a year ago it was all that google eyeball monsters (laughs) rainbow eyeball monsters right whereas now it's like fucking this is a viable way to do stuff yeah and it's weird it's almost like watching something um come into consciousness yep. like uh because it started off as that weird like lsd trip and now it's like kind of <laughs> dream logic but realistic enough that you know question it it's and like then, annihilation we're watching yeah, something alien dude, it's become so a person weird. <laughs> like it's cool like i don't know the whole idea of it is really cool i think it's really interesting i think it's really interesting to see the depths in people's minds of what they come up with because mm-hmm. Like, even if they had the skill, I don't know if they would be putting these two words together and creating this thing Um, or, you know, whatever, this phrase together and creating this thing. But I'm fascinated by the fact that AI doesn't have any it's inhuman Mm -hmm. is it literally will make things that a human would never think to do because it is it is like just our the way that our meat eyeballs look at things and the patterns that our brain writes Mm -hmm. like but move us in a direction right and uh, 
but would people not think of th- these things? Cause like Geiger exists. <laughs> Yeah, Do you but, know what I mean? Yeah. Like there are artists that create things that you're like, oh, I would have only saw that in a dream. I would have only thought of that in a horrifying whatever. Now I'm not like I, you know, this is not me arguing against because I have I'm no dog in this fight. I true. just think it's a really interesting conversation to have. I do too, and I I the thing is that um, this is one of those this is one of those things where I'm uh, my um, where I'm saying I would be more than happy to have a conversation about mm-hmm. it. Right now, the general thing seems to be, no. It's very no, binary, right? No. Or just it's... like 100% yes, pedal to the metal, fuck all artists that have ever existed, yeah. or just like, no. Yeah. If you ever look at an AI image, don't un- fucking lose my number, yeah. bitch. Scratch like, your eyes out. Yeah. Jump um, off a cliff, you piece I, of shit. Yeah, like, it's very funny because I have friends on both sides of this. Yep. So I have a friend that is like a diehard, like I, he got a, paid for a subscription to whatever to mm-hmm. use the AI. He's, he is an artist. This is a little differently than like, he's not like a, a drawing artist, but he's a different kind of artist. Mm-hmm. And to have he, him just like utilize it and he makes all these really cool weird things and then i have friends that work as artists mm. uh concept designs and you know whatever uh talking about it and just like the two differences in conversation are, it's so crazy to me because i i i i make no money in it and i the any art i make is totally not what this is so it's like what I <laughs> it's crazy where they're just like yeah no fuck it everything should be AI art because it's crazy and it's weird and it's awesome and it's like look at the innovation that you ha- get with it and anyone can do it and like this is a random person can make this fucking nutty thing and now everyone's seen it because it's cool and weird and then other people are like you're t- literally taking jobs there's no skill in it and it's just like we're jumbled that you're happens to work out my you- parents it's just fucking in it yeah you're but- eating my dog if you look at this <laughs> and it's like what Wait yeah, a minute, what, man. Yeah, like, like come maybe on. calm down but you know i get it i get the concerns and i i'm not here to like argue against people's concerns when i personally don't have those concerns that's a fucked up thing to do but i i also think that this doesn't seem like something that's going away anytime soon nope. and so there might need to be a different like i understand the initial reaction and now is the time to really figure out what your plan of action is. Uh, you, yeah, uh, 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 band together into an organization <laughs> and start lobbying like government lawmakers to be like, we're going to pass a bill that says that you must be like, if you tag a, a, a picture in a certain way, it must be opted out of whatever AI database is being used, right? Yeah. Like something like that. Like I'm not opposed to that. Not even a little bit. Yeah, that's the thing is, it's just concern. like yeah. so much of what I see is just this like. It's just the, like, I'm on social media and I'm telling you, no, you piece of shit. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. And I, I look at what Dolly was doing, you know, the, the silly shit that was happening with Dolly in, like, April of yeah. last year and, like, this. And it's like, guys, no, we're, we're, like, on the, we've gone over the top of the roller coaster. We are going down and yeah. we are picking up speed. It's like, really interesting. Like, have you seen, I th- think I might have linked it to you at some point, but the, like, fake behind the scenes of movies that didn't happen kind mm-hmm. of thing. Those are really interesting to look at. Like you yep. can still kind of, you know, you get the weird hand and some people will end up with like double face and stuff like that. But my God, is that super neat? Like w- you could feel that we're on the cusp of like somebody could make a movie that never happened. This stuff, like I, I clicked on one and they've, they're all come out as like, as an eighties dark fantasy film. Yeah. This is literally an anime. Yeah. Uh, that is like uh but yeah and the, again the thing is that like this shit was like not that just like unrecognizable two years ago. like yeah. eight months ago yeah like compared to this it's just so interesting how like fast forward this is yeah and not just i mean and not just with the visual stuff with the with the chat gpt stuff mm-hmm. as well like all that stuff to me is really interesting, and I think that it's better to try to guide it to an ethical location than it is. I mean, with again, I don't want to get too far into like history or my own politics or any of this stuff, but like, guys, uh, when there's a when there's a financial incentive to to progress a technology that would put other people out of business, mm-hmm. 
there have been very few times in the course of history where people have stood their ground and said, no, no advancement. Here is where we stop history. Do not advance this technology any further. Uh, the the um, looms, mechanical looms in mm -hmm. Britain, like the seamstresses, burned down yeah. several. There was like revolution about this. Guess what? I mean, yeah, like, I mean, uh, you know, we so. talk about the television. It's like stage um, actors were afraid of the film industry and the film industry was afraid of television and yep. uh it's just i don't it's just nutty to to see but i get it the, like the cusp of everything is is hard to know which way is the right way to fall on this sort of thing <laughs> i really liked this one that was uh memes as a uh 80s dark fantasy film oh my god uh, mostly just because i liked this was uh this is from a, a youtube channel called i create a thing um, and it was, where's the one that I want? Uh, no, 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 no. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Holding. It, I'm holding. I need to know the meme. Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. Is that like a no, mega no. Chad? What the fuck am I looking it's at? Giga Chad. Giga Chad. That's yeah. his name. Uh, the stonks guy. <laughs> oh my God. Where the hell is it? It's oh, the, uh, ugh. It, at this rate, it's just going to come up. I know. I thought um, you already went backwards. Oh, weird. Joker is like an evil king. That's kind of cool. Mega Mind. Yep. This <sighs> this is good radio. I, <laughs> what I are know. we looking oh, for? Oh, it's very odd. It's the it's the ladies yelling at the cat meme. Oh, <laughs> that's stupid. But it looks like a, yeah. it looks like an Evil Dead movie or it, something. Yeah, like, it's like a weird witch. Anyway, yelling at a. The fucking very strange very ghost strange. cat from house <laughs> yep yep anyway let's finish it up um oh yeah i got another ai <laughs> god damn it uh, i thought we were free this is uh this is interesting though i recommend everybody go look at this this is um google research labs mm -hmm. where they basically were piping like the text the text from zork one into an ai generator to basically create graphics for oh, zork what the hell is uh, zork Zork is like one of the very first text adventures that ever oh, happened. Oh, okay, that the, makes sense. You're going to be eaten by a Gru. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. from Zork. Like it was a, a kind of a fantasy thing. And so, yeah, they talk about how they like uh, just piped the inputs from this text adventure into an image generation. And there's a little bit more to it than that, but it's interesting. I recommend everybody go take a look. Yeah. So, that is um, interesting. let's see. Oh my God. Now we're running out of time. How did that happen? Uh, we talked about fucking ai for a million years uh anyway let's just do one more and then we'll answer one question Yay. Um, the so people play souls games in very weird ways uh, and the latest one is from a streamer called dr decomposing uh -huh. and uh he's doing a, a thing called doot doot souls oh my god uh, what is he playing on an electric saxophone. That's uh, this doesn't really work hilarious. as much without audio because yeah. he's really like burr, 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 <sighs> like attacking and what dodging happens if he all. plays like Careless Whisper? I, uh, I don't know. He like ultimate combo. They show it's interesting because he's using like the buttons because it's digital to like move around and he, then like the blowing for like attacking and and certain other things. That's hilarious. Uh, and when he was doing, there's a thing where he's fighting. Melania from uh, um, Elden Ring, uh -huh. and he had all of the the sound set to fart noises for it. So it really appeals to my oh juvenile my God, sense I of love humor. That he can change the sound. Yep. Oh my. And and he's trying to go through every single one of these games, and they're all uh, no death run. So he starts over if he dies. Oh, Jesus Christ! Sense. Well, because we long. There was another story last week about like it was like some lady with the DDR dance band. Yeah, that bought that beat two millennia at the same time. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, guys, I just want to play the game. This is I don't weird. <laughs> just play. Just enjoy a video game. What yeah. is this like? Uh, you beat and you can't die, and you got to be juggling while uh, also consoling your uh, cat who had a real bad day and this. Yep. Any, anybody also uh, entertaining people on Twitch. Anybody who uh, anybody who has asked me about like, well, what do you think about speed running? And I'm like, no, I want to enjoy my video games. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do challenge runs. I would just want to like play a video game. Uh, okay, so I think this is really interesting, Amanda. Yes, uh, we have a question in the Discord. Uh, Discord, your Discord question. Question. 
This one comes from Tiberius Monk, and this one was sent in 125 2022. Oh so my god! It's okay. a year old question, and I uh, it, it's it, uh, I'll read it and then we'll talk about it. Uh, it says, "Dear Jeff and Amanda, hope this new year is going well for you so far. <laughs> May Don please bless you all with a great new year. Name one film or and one TV show from 2021 that you found to be wildly surprisingly enjoyable, and why? For me, Mitchell's versus the Machines and Arcane League of Legends were a film and a TV show, respectively, that surprised me in quality and sheer enjoyment. With Mitchell versus the Machines." being my favorite film of 2021 and Arcane League of Legends, uh, my top 10 shows of the year. Would love to know your answers. Peace out, Ray John from Tiberius Monk. So I think we should do this from 2022. Good, because I don't even know. I was like, oh God, let's give it up. Pull up a list. Yeah. Now we're now we're specifically because like, okay, I think that um, like technically speaking, I think that Knives Out was the was my favorite movie from 2022 i know glass uh, onion uh, yeah. glass onion yeah it was right at the end right yeah. but like i just don't remember enjoying anything nearly as much as that there was things that there were obviously movies and tv shows that i enjoyed yeah but like that one was kind of like w- my my favorite dose so God, i don't think i enjoyed anything um uh, I'm trying to like get a list i'm i'm everything enters and leaves my brain so quickly yeah uh that I'm I don't gonna... like think of it as, t- <laughs> frankly, it's been 2019 for me for the last five years. Okay. Um, you know what was a great 2022 film? What's that? Um, the uh Werewolf by Night, like short special. <laughs> yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was a that was a good surprise too. As a surprise, too, right? yeah. yeah, as a surprise thing, because I'm not gonna be like everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once. Like, yeah, it was one of the greatest fucking films ever. Well, I mean, but you know, you were you were like, we weren't sure before that came out whether it was going to be good or not. Like once it came out, everybody. Oh, I was saw that like, trailer and was like, I want to watch it, and I haven't been watching any movies that I didn't think I'd enjoy. Okay. I was literally just talking to Jay Murphy about this, where I was like, I don't have the time of day to in- to just watch everything. I only watch things that I feel like I'll enjoy. Yeah. Because um, I just don't have the time. Who has the time for that? Why are you guys watching everything? Uh, I know I'm going to hate it, but I still want to watch it. Why? Yeah. Like, why y'all like that? <laughs> okay, so let me see if I can. I always just go to Metacritic and sort by score, which yeah. I know doesn't always work. Um, yeah, because I don't know half of those movies. Well, These are all just words. Uh, I don't know that I like the Northman enough to actually say. I so I own it. Haven't watched it. <laughs> uh, jib 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 jab jib jab. Did you watch? Oh, I forgot it because I looked at the Northman Dude, and then fuck threw my mad god that movie was gross and stupid. It's supposed to be gross and stupid. Yeah, but I don't care. Like it, <laughs> it was. Just, I haven't seen it. I don't know why I'm. It defending was just it. gross and stupid. Like that was all it was. I, and I'm so. kind of wondering if um the Skin of Marink. Have you seen it? Mm-mm. It's just came out um it's like a horror film but people are like it's less of a film and more of an experience <laughs> but because it's a horror film i'm like oh so it's gross yeah <laughs> like so it's just gonna make me feel uncomfortable and not have a plot thing barbarian i liked barbarian uh kind of out of nowhere yeah uh like see because like nope is here but i had expectations for that because of yeah. it being jordan peele so. yeah exactly right um, it's unfair i also genuinely enjoyed nope though you guys should watch it yeah let's if you like especially if you like creature features like old 1950s ones where mm-hmm. it's just like aliens flying through the sky dude it's just that but enjoyable oh, post and boots was that was that was technically it was last year yeah there you December go 21st uh but oh my god strawberry mansion that was actually a really good movie and we just happened upon it really i didn't uh, john february of last year yeah yeah. john saw that we own it on dvd because or a blu-ray because john saw the trailer and we were like desperate to watch it Uh because it's just weird it's literally like the idea this guy is a tax agent okay and they tax your dreams (laughs) i know it's all right so you gotta understand that this is definitely one of those indie films where it's like cutesy and like kind of not Wes Anderson-y, but it's got that, like, they watched, um, oh, God, I can't even think of it, the Kate Winslet, uh, Jim Carrey movie, oh, what is it called? The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, That yeah. kind of, like, thing, but, like, a little cuter than that, mm-hmm. and um, a little more twee than that, and um, they, so he, he meets a woman, and he, she doesn't have her, like, dreams available to him, so he has to, like go through them in a more like analog way and 
Now we're 200 videos into this list and I still can't find anything that I would say. The Weird Al? That was, that was, <laughs> no, honestly, that probably would be the most surprisingly good thing that I watched because I had no idea what I was in for. And then I sat down and watched it. And I was like, look, rolling off this couch with laughter. Yeah. Like it was so fucking funny. I had a lot of fun uh, figuring out who was playing who. <laughs> like I the whole, spent the whole time. The it was Andy like Warhol. a Where's Waldo yeah. for me of just like, oh, that's definitely one of the Lonely Island guys. Yep. And, yeah, yeah. That's probably the one that I would put on. Uh, of course, it's funny because I did really, really, really enjoy the Beavis and Butthead do the universe movie. Yeah, like, I remember when you watched it because you were trying to pitch it to me and I'm like, yep. no. Um, anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, uh, no. Strawberry Ranch is just a weird, cute indie film. It's not great, but you can see where like good ideas came from for it. Yeah. So I like, I recommend it if you're not like, d- uh, like looking for the next greatest movie ever, but you want to see something kind of different. Yeah. This is fun. That it was fresh cute. was kind of interesting, mm. but it wasn't very. It was okay. Um, it's probably going to be that Weird Al movie, man. Yeah, Rescue Rangers. That was not very good. <laughs> uh, it was. I mean, it was okay. Yeah, but just made me watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and I was like, oh my god, it's so much better. <laughs> That's kind of what everyone said. I I uh, thought I was going to like put time into that, but Black Phone was pretty good. Yeah, you know what? I don't know that it was a great year for movies last year outside of like... Horror movies seem to do really well. It was what, like X and um, Pearl and... Um, Smile. Yeah, Smile, Black Ter- Phone. Terrifier 2. Nope. Like yeah. there was, yeah, there was a lot of decent... Um, i just like, we're into the 300s over here. Yeah, and hell I'm still yeah, we not are. finding very much. Uh, I think I just watched a lot more series because I actually pulled it out. Uh, well, no, no, that's Bell. Bell was good. That was... Uh, anime from the this guy that's done a lot of different kind of weird animes yeah uh it's beauty and the beast mm-hmm. but it's basically like a, a weird kind of online metaverse version oh. it's the guy that did summertime wars okay um and it's like everybody goes into like this kind of online vr metaverse mm-hmm. and then they kind of create their own personas there and it's about a girl who's like a shy wallflower who then in this metaverse becomes like a huge uh, singing sensation mm-hmm. but then there's also like this kind of outlaw beast character that fucks things up in like the metaverse and like it's really weird like yeah, interesting. Um, there's a, a the same guy did a thing called um the beast and the boy which is like a, a little kid who's like an orphan it's like ends a up in bear the, dude yeah yeah, yeah yeah i remember the poster for it i never yeah. did see it i watched it i watched a whole i rewatched a whole bunch of their movies before i went i watched this and like that movie is really strange uh because it's like it starts out as like this kid his parents die he runs away from home he's on the streets he follows these two magical creatures and ends up basically miyazaki style inside like a fantasy world yeah where then he like uh, the this beast man takes him on as like a, a an apprentice, mm-hmm. and then it's like it flashes forward. And now he's like a teenager, and he's like confident and doing stuff. But then like he finds his way back out, and like meets this girl, and like gets really into her, and then like signs up to go to college, and then like is away, and then he wanders back in, and like beast dad is real mad at him for like trying to go to college in the human world. It's very strange. Yeah. Like it goes okay. kind of off the rails. Anyway, Bell is really interesting. I think this is on like Disney or one of them. As far as TV shows go, fucking Severance, man. Severance. Oh, was... I really Severance is the only show that has even kind of made me want uh, Apple, TV. Apple TV. Yeah, because I'm like resistant right now. Yeah. Right. Severance uh, absolutely, totally, and completely rules. And I was like, re- actually, that really just makes me realize how little the movies that I watched this year had an impact on me. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I could not wait every night when that was happening to, like, Friday night. Fucking Severance is like the first thing on the list. Yeah. Um, and it was so good. Um, and it ends on a, it ends on a, 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 cliffhanger right like there's gonna be a second season two i was gonna say do we know if it's getting a second season (sighs) apple just keeps seem seems to keep putting uh money into stuff so yeah um so it's not like netflix where if you fall in love with something it's gonna get canceled 
Why would they do that? Why would if, don't, don't they realize that if they keep doing that, everybody's going to be like, well, then why watch it? Right. They're, they're, your friend's going to be like, oh, my God, you've got to watch a snake baby yeah. season one. And you're just like, why? Yeah. If I like it, it who cares? They're just going to cancel it. Like, I can't watch anything personally because every time I fall in love with a TV show, it gets canceled. So I'm doing you all a favor. <laughs> By, by not, not watching, watching TV. <laughs> Every time people are like, you have to watch this. And I'm like, I'll wait until it's completely done. And they'll be like, no, you have to watch it now. And I'm like, I'm doing you a favor. I'll wait until it's done. <laughs> like, <laughs> I did really like Umbrella Academy season three. Though. I'm so far behind on Umbrella Academy. I really loved the first season. And then I was like, I better stop watching. I like all three. And like at any point, if it stops, that's fine. Like they kind of end on they all end on cliffhangers yeah right but like they're the weird kind of cliffhangers where it's like almost the continuation of a story as opposed to like no the cliffhangers are the start of another story yeah. so it's like the in season three it's all about like so, reality breaking down yeah and then at the end it's like they kind of come out and they're like in a whole other world and things are different and it's like so you know you're not already invested you right got a, it, got all a conclusion. i can do is the if it ends it doesn't come back right um it's the and their adventures continue. Was, everybody was into Archive eighty one. I love January. Archive eighty one, and you know what happened? Get it canceled. got canceled. You know why? Because it's, <laughs> it's on, on Netflix. fucking Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of which, I'm going to cancel this podcast right now. Oh no, we're done. Stay tuned for next week when we have an AI generated podcast. <laughs> one one, we're going to answer one question a year at least <laughs> from now on. <laughs> so leave your questions. Get them in now. <laughs> Go to patreoncom forward slash range like get your questions. Questions in <laughs> next year. Who knows? Maybe we'll answer one more. Sorry, Tiberius <laughs> Monk. I hope you weren't holding your breath that whole time. Hey, we got we 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 answered the question in our own way. So, um, yeah, that's it. Patreon.com forward slash range like help us out. Other than that, we're done. We're done. We're done. Now I'm gonna go to Taco Bell. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do it. He's going. I'm to not it. gonna do we're it. Gone. I'm not. No, I don't want to.